And Bobby Madden will be on VAR duty for us on Sport Sound today. So stay tuned. All the action, all the goal news coming up on Open All Mics. Chance, chance, chance! And it's a goal! Oh, what a goal! Oh! All the action from all the biggest games. Oh, it's a second goal! Oh! This is Open All Mics from Sport Sound. From BBC Radio Scotland. You're listening to Open All Mics on BBC Radio Scotland. A very busy afternoon ahead here. All the goal news to come. And I can tell you, a minute silence is being observed around the country this afternoon for Armistice Day. Willie Miller is at Dens Park for us this afternoon. Willie, just about to go into that now. I can see the players out in the park. Yes, we are. Um, Ken, the players are just out. Uh, referee um, getting them organised and we'll go into that to... Uh, Minute silence uh, very, very shortly. Looking forward to this game, though, I must say. It uh, has got uh, the mark of uh, being an exciting one. Um, I think Dundee are playing at a very high level. Um, and, and St Mirren, obviously, the quality that they've shown um, this year has been outstanding. Um, and it's a perfect day for it as well, um, yeah, Kenny. You know, absolutely it. sun uh, shining down on, on the players uh, just now. With the paper, the paper um, actually led the players out. Um, very slow walk towards um, the centre circle and as the referee just gathers the players around that centre circle and he wa wa uh, walks to um, the spot and lays the ball down and On we're going to go into day, uh, that minute silence Gone. very, very shortly. Thank you, Willie. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Each shall not weary them, nor males condemn them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We would ask that you now observe a period of respectful silence, which will begin and end with the referee's whistle. That's it, that's a minute's uh, silence and a huge uh, respect to our fallen heroes. Um, and now we go on with a game of football. Absolutely, Willie, and perfectly observed there at Dens Park ahead of that game. Dundee at home to St Mirren. Both these clubs having a terrific start to the campaign. Four games in the top flight this afternoon on open all mics. Two in the championship. Let's then get to Queen's Park against Wraith Rovers. There for us, Chick Young. Uh, Kenny, just right on the kickoff, you join us here at the National Stadium as Wraith Rovers pursue Dundee United at the top of the championship. Remember, <coughs> United, thanks to their victory last night, now with 31 points. Wraith Rovers chilling them with seven points now, but with two games in hand, so potentially get that back to a point. Queen's Park slipping down the table with four points off a relegation playoff as we stand this afternoon. It's a glorious afternoon, emotional a minute silence there as was, uh, as was saluted by all around the country this afternoon. Clear blue skies over Hamden. An interesting football match ahead. And Kenny, if this doesn't work out well, there's a whiskey festival at Hamden this afternoon. <laughs> oh, so you dear. know you'll get me. <laughs> You've already got the nose for it. <laughs> no, it's go! What an effort that was, yeah, Kenny, but that's Lowry. Uh, brilliant, just picks the ball up, he's about 40 yards out, just drifts inside, right foot, as soon as he let go, it looked as if it was going to find its way into that top corner. Not sure how close it was uh, from this uh, position of more up in the, the stand, but uh, I tell you what, Kelly was stranded, he wasn't getting there, it was a, uh, just a lovely bit of play, you know, just just gets on the ball, on the half turn, and he's got one thought in his mind, gets away from the player, and as soon as you hit it, you know, it's a sweet strike, and just, uh, I don't know, I've used, I've, I've got pictures yeah, there. Yeah, we're just, Bobby's with how, me in the studio. How close was that? It. Was it close as, as it looked? It's a couple of yards past, actually, was I think. Really? He rides that challenge, and he gets a shot off well, as you say, but it is a couple of yards past the goalkeeper's left-hand post. Oh, runs in, oh, it's off the post! 
quite magnificent to strike from Rudden. He broke free down the right-hand side, uh, cut inside, took the defender on, got it onto that left foot, struck it towards a near post and so unlucky to see it ricochet off that near post. Almost a perfect start for Dundee. Yeah, almost a dream start there at Dens Park. Let's get to our other game in the Championship this afternoon. Airdrie against a broth there for us, Amy Canavan. Good afternoon, Amy. Afternoon, Kenny. Yeah, it's seventh against six in the Scottish Championship at a very sunny Excelsior Stadium. I'm currently having to have my sunglasses on and have my hand up to see the game here. Didn't think I'd be having that in November. Reese McCabe's side earned a draw against second place Wraith Rovers last week. I was there. I was very impressed by the attacking intent of the Diamonds, given that top goal scorer Callum Gallagher was on the bench as he is again this afternoon. The sides met back in September. Our both romped to a 4 0 victory that afternoon. An afternoon where both sides actually ended the game with 10 players. First three scorers in that win at Gayfield, McKenna, Hilton and Bird all start, but Leighton, Leighton McIntosh, sorry, is out injured as is Tam O'Brien. If we get a game anything like that one, we'll be doing all right today. Referee for this one is Grant Irvin. Thank you, Amy. There has been a goal in the Championship. Partick Thistle 1, Morton nil. Kerr McEnroy on three minutes and in the English Premier League, Crystal Palace nil. Everton 1, Mikolenko in the first minute there. The full-time Scoreline from earlier on down in England saw Ange Postacoglu Spurs beaten away at Wolves by two goals to one that after they had gone ahead. Let's then get to the early stages. Let's get to Easter Road, Michael Stewart. Hibs against Kilmarnock. Well, um, just pleased to confirm that uh, VAR technology is not the worst uh, technology in Scotland at the moment. The broadcasting ability here is, uh, <laughs> is a little bit worse than VAR. Um, it's, it's obviously it's still no, no. There's not, uh, there's not uh, five minutes being played here at Easter Road, but I just wanted to get something clear with Bobby Madden. Does Bobby <laughs> agree oh, that still pictures are inconclusive? They're not inconclusive. They show the point of contact, but then you need to consider the intensity of the challenge, and that's what people are missing. So they're not conclusive. Let me rephrase that. So they show the point of contact. But um, you wouldn't. You, you you do not. Solely, uh, this is not. A, I'm, I'm not looking for some sort of, uh, you know, technical detail with what yep. UEFA think. I'm, I'm asking your opinion. You would accept that it's not a conclusive picture on a still. Absolutely not. Yeah. So uh, just to clarify, 100%. That is not what happened on sports scene because that was the mantra always. <laughs> the mantra always was still <laughs> pictures are not conclusive yeah. for exactly that reason because they give you a false impression and that's why when you see referees walking over and looking at a still picture on VAR I think it's a nonsense because straight away it's painting the complete wrong image of what might have happened I think if VAR's going to survive then what needs to be happening is it needs to be getting used a hell of a lot less and also even for things like where we, I think we accepted initially that we're offsides it's black and white it's now got to the stage where personally I don't feel like if a player is marginally offside which is about to happen here at Easter Road Martin Boyle scored but he's flagged offside that you want that in a game of football to be scrutinised take five minutes and then realise his big toe was offside I think if you want to look at it then the referee or the officials in a tight call should go over and look at VAR and they should get two or three looks at it in real time and if they're able to determine that their on-field decision was wrong then great and if they're still unsure the on-field decision should stay and it speeds things up and we accept that it's imperfect but I think we all realise that the system that's in place just now is, is, is even more so in terms of imperfect and causing more problems and the Maeda one I hear what Bobby's saying but then the question for me is should it be a red card? Not do the laws say it's a red card. I think everybody in football looks at that and says that shouldn't be a red card. Now but that doesn't matter, really, does well, it? Well, it does because we're talking about should VAR stay? VAR's here. Why should we even be discussing if VAR shouldn't stay? It's all about opinions, and laws can change, things can change. So I think it's fair to say, should that be a red card? I don't think it should be. Then there's 50-50. I mean, as I said, 8,000 people voted in, in my poll and it was exactly 50-50. So th there's always going to be that subjectivity. But I think when there is that level of subjectivity, just allow the referee to referee the game. So we completely agree. Bobby, you're under pressure because Leanne gets the calls quick on a Saturday when we ask her. So you're going <laughs> to have to look quick. <laughs> and then we'll see if we've got an, a, a, well, a referee, an ex-referee here. 
that can do it a lot quicker than VAR will probably be able to do it. Well, let's see. No pressure. Uh, just to say, Al, I know you love these, uh, and my money's always on you to come out and talk. I've got a wee quiz for you guys this afternoon. I think it's a decent one, I have to say. Quite looking forward to this one. So get to that in a short while. What's happening in your game, Al? Nothing at the moment. We've played eight minutes, uh, Kenny, so far. And you know, but what I have to say, there, there seems to be a slightly bigger crowd here at McDermott. So the Craig Levine factor early on. There's certainly a bigger home crowd than I have seen in, in most of the games I've been at this season up here. Your thoughts on that appointment, Alan? Um, I think we're going to have to look at it. Craig's been out of the game for four years coaching. I know he's talking about Andy Kirk coaching. It's, it's a, it's a, I'd say it's a sensible appointment more than anything, but will it, will it work? Will, time will tell. Willie, do you expect to see a change in this friendly, cuddly Craig Levine we've had in the studio with us? <laughs> Think you'll revert back to type? <laughs> I do. Well, <laughs> yeah. th 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 there's every chance that that, that would happen. I, I was surprised, that, you know, I spent quite a bit of time uh, with Craig. I, I wasn't surprised because of, uh, you know, what he's done as a manager. I was surprised uh, in, in terms of having conversations with him. He seemed perfectly happy with his life, you know, the, the kind of a slow pace, taking a dog a walk. Uh, you, you know, going on a team bus, uh, breaking, having a drink or two, watching a game, no real pressure or stress or strain. So I was a little bit surprised to see him jump back into the melting point. Oof. Yeah, oh, Michael, we, we, we discussed this briefly, Michael, on Wednesday night at St Mirren Park. You were saying you feel he's lucky to be in that position given his record at Hearts. But I think what you would accept is with what most of us have said in this programme, St Johnson, they're likely to be banging in trouble this season. If he can turn it around, it'll be some achievement. Sorry, Kerry, I didn't hear you there. If you say that again. Yeah, and just so we discussed, we discussed them on Wednesday night. Craig Levine, the appointment. Yes. And you were saying to me, you he's feel fortunate. Get, you, you Extremely think he's fortunate. fortunate. To be there, but well, you, he is. I mean, I think if you look at the fact that um, he's managed for two years out of uh, the last eleven, and those two years were far from successful, I would suggest that any manager would be fortunate to be landing himself uh, a gig in the top. You would, you would also say, given that the predictions the pundits have made in terms of St Johnson's fate this season, if he does turn it around, it would be a decent achievement. It would be a, a very good achievement, yeah. Uh, there's a fair bit of work that's needing to be done there, and um, if uh, St Johnston managed to steer themselves uh, clear of trouble, then it uh, would, be a, would be a good job, yeah. Crystal Palace have equalised at home to Everton. Easy with a goal there from the penalty spot on five minutes. Dumbarton 1-0 mm. up with East Fife. Calvin Orsi on four minutes there. And the latest goal news, Falkirk, my goodness, behind at home to Edinburgh City. Innes Murray with a goal there on nine minutes. What a turnaround that would be for the fortunes of Edinburgh City. They've had a dreadful start to the season. Just a reminder, the first goal in the Championship this afternoon, it came for part of Thistle Kerr McEnroy. Three minutes, one nil up at home to Morton. Let's then get to Derek uh, Ferguson. What's Kenny, happening? I, yeah. On just you go. For you, I just, I'm just going to say that, that you didn't tell the whole story at Spurs. There were, it was nil nil after 90 minutes, and the Fincher lost, I think, a goal, the winning goal in the ninth minute of time added on. Nil nil, and they lost two goals in the time added on. No, they were one nil up, check after 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Three minutes. Lost two goals. Three minutes, sorry, no Aye. 30 minutes. One nil up after three minutes. minutes. After 90. Yeah, a tough week for Ange Postacog, you'd have to say. Derek, what's happening there at Fair Park? That's a good old game at the moment, no, 15 minutes gone. Uh, Beer had a wonderful chance. Uh, I think it was Amy was doing her a uh, little introduction to the show there. I didn't want to butt in, but it was a, a corner kick, uh, Spittle just in and Beer just pulling off at the back post area. He's only, what, seven, eight yards out. It's a free header as well. And got it all wrong, put it well past the, the right hand post. But uh, yeah, we've had that Lowry chance, the, the, the Beer chance. And, it's a good pace about it, good atmosphere as well. Big crowd in here at Fir Park this afternoon. Uh, so uh, the way the both sets of players are going at it, this ain't going to stay no nothing each, that's for sure. Let's hope for goals this afternoon. Chick Young, what about Wraith Rovers? They've had a terrific start to the season. How are they doing in the early stages here at Hamden? Well, I'm still considering the Whiskey Festival as an option at half-time. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, if it was 10 all, you would consider that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I said they would look like 10 all. <laughs> uh, it's, um, yeah, I think we've sparked with the better spell, a uh, better team in this opening spell, to be honest with you. Getting forward to you a little bit, just cut off. Um, yeah, it's a big incentive, Kenny, for Wraith Rovers, uh, as I said, Dundee United won last night. Currently, it's, um, we're used to this. Uh, championship bunching up and being really competitive. As I look at, about it at the moment, that's not quite uh, the way it's been in the past. It's United look as if they're really striding towards promotion. 
Uh, but Wraith Rovers, if they win today and get the other game in hand, a victory, then it'll be down to one point, so maybe closer than it looks. But um, yeah, Queen's Park need to sort themselves out as well. Here's a chance for Rovers actually at the other end. Been a bit of a delay, goalkeeper just picks it up. Still no no at Hamden, Kenny. Yeah, despite Rovers hanging in there, Alan Preston, can you see anything other than a United success this season? They will be champions. No, I think United will win it and win it comfortably. They're a good side, good squad. You know, I didn't think they were particularly great last night. I thought Dunfermon played well, we're unlucky. Um, but United have got the quality I mean, you know, when, when scores are getting thinner and thinner United will, will, and I would imagine in January they'll maybe even go again if Jim needs something in January they'll have a bit of finance to go again so I think United will win it comfortably but as far as it likes the Wraith Rovers are concerned new ownership I think they've done really well the guys that have gone in there and they're a surprise for me being where they are in the league they've played excellent and I watched them against Dunfermline the other week there good side decent side Wraith Rovers What's happening in the early stages in your game, Amy Airdrie against Arbroath? Not too much, Kenny Arbroath, I think, have been the better side. Jay Bird and Scott Stewart have just sort of skimmed the wrong side of the post, really, but not too much happening in the attacking sense from Airdrie so far. Derek, it's OK if I share with you the wee message you sent to me last Saturday. We didn't have an open all mics last weekend about your boy. Eh... Uh... I on you go. <laughs> I, I, just, listen, I, but I, I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. I don't know if any of you guys saw, but Derek sent me a message. It was after Lewis had scored the winner. How I, would we see what his message was to you? No, I don't know if any of you saw it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> if you let me finish. Is that a top scorer? Top Scottish scorer in Italian no, football? No, 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 no. Biscuits, he'd done the interview in Italian. He was no, asked, brilliant. did he want to great. do it in English or Italian? And it, it was just, I, I was just having a laugh, you know, and I was thinking... My God, that's my son, you know, speaking in Italian. Kenny, you broadcast the Italian this channel every week. <laughs> I don't even speak English, uh, Chip, so, uh, as, we, as we well know. So, uh, no, fair play to him, you know, because, as I say, he bought into the, the culture, everything about it, and I think it really is important uh, that you do learn the language. And uh, I get into trouble a wee bit, certainly for my missus, as I say he's fluent in Italian. Not quite fluent, but uh, he can hold his own. So That's brilliant. So I'm going to see, see if I can share it. I'm, if, if I could work this out, how to share it on my Twitter account, but maybe you can help me with this, Bobby. I'll try and do this. Kenny. It was terrific. Do you remember, actually, Derek, we had him in the programme last season. It was ahead of Rangers' game in Napoli, and he joined us live in the programme. It was terrific. And he, that night, he was interrupting his lessons, his Italian lessons. That's right, he was yeah. saying he was really enjoying it. But my goodness, when he spoke after the game, it was terrific. Terrific to see. Yeah, it was great. As long as you can order me uh, a, a wee drink here or two, you know, <laughs> when we're over there and a nice meal, that's all I'm interested in. But no, no, fair play to him, you know. And he's, uh, nah, uh, do you know something? Don't Take worry, Derek, the... I think espresso's the same in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael, you're some man. <laughs> he is some man, that's uh, for sure. No, but it, no, it, I don't know whether I was more proud of his performance or else that, you know, just doing that interview after the game. So, uh, he's, he's, so uh, he's, he's doing well, so I'm extremely proud of him. Ah, you must be. Fantastic. And it's, it's fantastic for all of us to see a Scott doing so well there as well. We are discussing VAR earlier, Charles Sweeney on Twitter says, I agree with Tom and Bobby, I would bin the VAR, it ruins the fan experience. Kenny, here's one yep. though in terms of yep. binning VAR, right? Yep. And I've just spoken about how, you know, I would be in favour of that. The difficulty is, and the reality is, it's not going to happen because domestically if here's we were to chance. do that... Here's a chance for Hearts, boys. Oh, he took another... Oh, he's got to score that. Lowry breaking into the box, oh! you think? Oh! It's a goal for Dundee. It's a magnificent ah. strike from Bakayoko. From the corner, it's not clear that falls to his left foot. He strikes it as he's fallen to the ground. Gets plenty of power, good direction. And it ends up in the back of the net. Dundee take the lead. I see you're right. I said, there won't be any issues with VAR here. It's broke to me. Struck that well. And it's, a, it's a very tidy finish. Kenny, uh, Hearts have got to score. Lowry again, you know, picks the ball up, drives into the box. I'm thinking he's going to hit this. And uh, really unselfish, just lays in, boys. I don't know why he doesn't hit it first time. Takes a touch, cuts back inside, takes another touch, and then somehow puts it past the left-hand post. A glorious chance, perhaps. Really should be in the lead. I think you're right. There is a slack play in the right-back area for Motherwell. Yeah. It's picked up, and then why take the extra touch to slot that away? Could that be a confidence thing? But I think it's a missed opportunity. Oh, big... Kenny, I was just, say, yeah, I was just saying there about, you know, binning VAR. The, the problem is we're talking about this in a domestic sense, and we bin that domestically, then we're completely out of sync with what's going on in Europe. It's going to, obviously, yep. would hamper the officials with regards to getting, you know, gigs and, and 
and improving their position in the European stage as well. So then, realistically, what needs to be spoken about is just reforming it, and not just in the, this country, but you know, European-wide, worldwide, because I think everybody, not just here in Scotland, I think down in England, they're probably having their worst season of it, and they've had it for a lot longer, and they spend a lot more money on it. I think it needs to be reformed worldwide to actually just not get involved as often. Totally we spoke, about, we totally spoke about this during the week, Kenny, when you know when a new compliance officer used to come in for about the first six months of the season, it would be every week there'd be a, yeah. a multitude of incidents that would be looked at, and it would just become like unsustainable, and then it would slowly drift away. I, I feel like that's what needs to happen with R to the same extent. But the problem you have is it's like from FIFA, UEFA down to the SFA. When a decision is made, like at the MEDA, for example, yep. that UEFA will then cascade the information. We believe this is a correct or incorrect decision. So then what happens is the next week, that same or a similar challenge, because no two challenges are generally the same, happens. So for consistency, the referee then applies that. So naturally that lowers the bar of intervention. Yep. Whereas that bar of intervention be, should be so high, yeah, but it's uh, gradually coming down because you keep sharing what they believe is the correct decision. Absolutely. Yeah, again, totally in agreement there that... Um, and not only that, the, the bar for you know for red cards now is just it's, it's mental. And then once you actually chuck in what VAR's looking at as well, so there's one thing in terms of just in general play, the bar for a sending off now is I think is just crazy. And then when you add in the fact that VAR's looking at all these two, three, four times, it just becomes unsustainable for me. Yeah. Martin Boyle's running through on goals. He's one v one. Stuart Finlay's got back. The referee's allowing the game to play on, which I think is the right call. He had his arm on Martin Boyle, but I don't think it was anything that you would regard should have been uh, penalised. Inevitably, it will be looked at. No, nope, you're correct again, Michael. You're on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new there, Bobby. <laughs> just a loving. Just a loving. <laughs> Miss you. I'm not liking Miss this, you, really. Come on. Come on. Be back. <laughs> There's There's been been a goal at Kenny. Yep. Amy. Aye, there's been a goal of the Excelsior for Adrian and Liam McStravick just bursting down the left hand side, doing really well. Uh, it's an initial decent enough save from Derek Gaston, and he comes in and slots it home. 1 0 Adrian It's Fantastic, nice to hear yeah. that Bobby's getting into the way of Martin uh, Michael Stewart's rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all get there eventually. So just going through the goals back here on 60 minutes, puts D ahead. Hamilton Aki's 1-0 up at home to Stirling Albion. Kevin O'Hara on 14 minutes. Rory McAllister has scored for Peter Head. 1-0 up at home to Sundrara, as I said. Spartans 1-0 up away at Stennis Muir. Bradley White on 16 minutes. And confirmation of that goal for Airdrie. Liam McStravick on 90 minutes has them 1-0 up at home to our bro. So a terrific start, Willie Miller, for the home side of Dens. Yeah, and they've been playing with the energy that, you know... Uh, uh, that they've had in recent games, you know, Tony Doherty's obviously instilled that, and um, it's, it's very positive. It's, it, it's pretty straightforward in terms of the uh, with the two up top as well, and they don't mess about getting it forward. Um, uh, yeah, it's not a criticism either. You know, if it's on to play it, they'll try to play through midfield. But uh, you know, you've got two tall main uh, target men there, and they get it up and they get up and support them uh, too. So it's been a brilliant start for them, full of energy. Although, you know, Shimon have never, not been out of it. They, they've had uh, their moments, not any clear cut opportunities, but plenty of the ball and uh, plenty in the ball in the final third as well. So it's been a good game going end to end. What's happening then at Easter Road, Michael Stewart, the home side on top? Uh, no, not really. It's been quite. Uh back and forward between the, the two sides it's uh, you know as soon as Martin Boyle was uh, through on goals at uh, one end the, the opposition the away team come on it broke up the other end Marley Watkins driving into the box and before the ball got knocked behind so no, I mean it's been very uh, very even so far Hibs are not um, you know we've seen when uh, since Nick Montgomery's come in it's been 4-4-2 or the other night with Josh Campbell playing uh, and you would have thought beforehand an extra midfielder, but he played almost like an out-and-out -out striker. But today there's uh, there's a fair bit of movement. Martin Boyle's been quite central through the middle. 
Josh Campbell's been in behind and drifting to the right and uh, Tavares as well not playing as an out and out wide man so there's been a wee bit of a difference in the way that uh, of Hibs have set up it's not just been a straightforward 4-4-2 as they have done in uh, pretty much every other game that uh, Nick Montgomery's been in charge with and an Athletic 1-0 up away at Montrose Tommy Goss in the penalty spot on 22 minutes Cove Rangers there on a terrific run 1-0 up away at Kelty Hearts Roman Burrell on 18 minutes I've just shared I think I'm just going to check that if anyone tuned in wants to have a look at this I'm not sure if I've successfully done it or not, but hopefully on Twitter, what Derek sent to me last week, that terrific clip of Lewis out in Italy, if I can just find if it's posted and see, and then people are going to have a look at that now. It's taking its time. Yeah, it's there. Have a look at that, the guys, any of the guys at Twitter, have a look at that at half time. Fantastic to see Lewis Ferguson doing so well abroad. So I'll go around the latest scores for you, and then we'll get the quiz out to the guys this afternoon. So Dundee 1, St Mirren 0, Hibs 0, Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 0, Hearts 0, St Johnson 0, Ross County 0. In the Championship, Airdrie 1 are both 0. Inverness, Cali Thistle 0, Air United 0, Partick Thistle 1, Morton 0, Queen's Park 0, Wraith Rovers 0. In League 1, Alloa 0, Queen of the South 0, the leaders Falkirk 0, Edinburgh City 1, Hamilton Aggies 1, Stirling Albion 0, Kelty Hearts 0, Cove Rangers 1, Montrose 0, and an Athletic 1. In League 2, East Fife 0, Dumbarton 1, Elgin City 0, Bonnie Rig Rose 0, Forfar 0, Clyde 0, Peterhead 1, Stranraer 0, Stennis Muir 0, Spartans 1, and in England, it finished at lunchtime, Wolves 2, Tottenham Hotspur 1, it's Arsenal 0, Burnley 0, Nil. Crystal Palace won, Everton won two very early goals there. Everton went ahead, Palace quickly back into that one. Man United nil, Luton nil. The 5 30 kickoff is Bournemouth at home to Newcastle United. Let's then get to Derek Ferguson, Mother against Hart at Fair Park. What's happening there, Derek? Yeah, Hearts really should win the leads, Kenny. Uh, still thinking about that chance. You know, Lowry plays in boys. You know, don't know why he takes a touch. You know, he's only about what? nine, ten yards out, it should be a first time finish, certainly in the box and they elected to take it back in you know, then ends up dragging the shot wide but uh, you know, Lowry, been the main danger man for Hearts, certainly just put a little cross in there from Mullow you know, just playing behind Boyce and Shanklin you know, trying to get on the half turn so Mullow have got to be you know, be really aware so it's, it's been Hearts that have been pretty dominant, uh, you know, forcing the play but every now and again as we have just now, Mullow will get themselves up the park uh, with a corner kick, but uh, I would say Hearts just the, the better side at the moment, and, and the more looking, the more likely to get that opening goal. Alan Preston, it's fair to see you've seen quite a lot of St Johnston this season. <laughs> What's different under Craig Levine? I was actually just speaking to Kerradine there, who's working for television, that you can see already, and I think it's Andy Cut's philosophy. Craig talked about it in his press conference this week. They're taking more chances at the back now. They have to be careful, um, but they're certainly getting the ball down and, and passing it more than I've seen along the back taking more risks, taking more chances he's wanting them to play it into Phillips and into Smith into the middle of the park, try and get into the wider areas and it's going to take a bit of time but I certainly see a difference from the back more than anything else that they are certainly taking more chances St Johnson will you know, get it and get it up to the, the strikers if they can but now they're trying to play more which is a definite and improvement for me on that front and still, yep. still no now but still no, no, no. Not, any, not any chances Chick Young, any improvement in what's happening on the field there? Yeah, it's, tw it's 25 minutes played and it's uh, Wraith Rovers, uh, it's Queen's Park nil, Wraith Rovers nil, and I would say it's pretty eeksy peeksy in terms of pressure and possession. Some good football getting played by both sides, particularly Queen's getting a bit down and knocking it forward, uh, getting forward swiftly as well. They've got the ball back for the goalkeeper who's comfortable at the moment, and, uh, and, and big Charlie Fox not shy at getting on the ball and sprinting forward. It's quite a good game, actually, Kenny. I'm going to have to delay my departure to the <laughs> festival. But, uh, um, please do. Oh, here's we, a we chance for Queen's yeah, now. Go. Oh, just past the post. Yeah, 25 and a half minutes gone, Kenny, 0-0. You at least have seen a goal there. Amy Canavan, the home side, still on top. 
I think it's fair to say they probably are, Kenny. Yeah, there's not been too much separating the sides, mind you, though. It's, um, well, I've got a goal. It, 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 yes, Sorry, it. Amy, to get in there. Shanklin gets the final touch. It will be checked, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a corner from Lowry. Way at the back post. I think it was Rolls gets on it, and there's Shanklin. He's only what, a yard or two. Just helps into the back of the net. It's a bit of an in slow motion, to be honest with you, but, uh, but certainly they look to more likely, and they've got the opening goal of Hearts. I see it will be checked, but uh, I'm sure I think it might have been a Donald. Somebody was on the line. Uh, but yeah, Hearts take the lead. I just waiting the pictures coming through there. Yep, yeah. in from Th This is the thing, isn't it? We, we, we need to wait, wait all the time, you know. Are we going to share? I, I don't think there'll be any issue there. He's, he's just taken a backward step, up, lost his marker, and, and it's a light to see it goes in in slow motion. I think Mother will be disappointed to lose that goal from a set piece. Yeah, as you say, that you hope that I don't think it'll play a part in that. But it was the last game actually you were the fair part. Was it the game against County? And it was just, it was VAR every every, just about every incident, wasn't it? It was every five minutes. Yeah. Uh, it was absolute, absolutely doing my head into Bond Street, Kenny. But uh, I just thought that might be, you know, check. You can see the players, the reaction of the players. They're looking, should yeah. we celebrate? Shouldn't we? Uh, you know, I'm just unsure. But uh, but no, Hearts have probably deserved it. You've had the best moments. To say that boys moment was. Uh, you know, it was it was poor from him. Maybe uh, that lack oh. of confidence uh, that he's maybe has in his play. But uh, Hearts, you know, got the lead, so you wonder if they're going to kick on here against some other side. You know, that are kind of devoid of confidence at the moment. So Lauren Shanklin with that goal on 27 minutes. Stranraer have equalised the weight. Peterhead, Ben Armour on 24 minutes. Let's then see if I can get this uh, quiz out. If anyone fancies a wee quiz, so here we are. James Tavernier entered the list of top 10 goal-scoring defenders this week. He's in at number seven. So, two questions here. Who do you think is at number one? And this player played many, many years ago. And there is one Scottish defender in the top 10 goal-scoring defenders of all time. Where? In Europe? Yeah, well, that, yeah, in, all these players have played in Europe. They're not all European, but all these yeah, players yeah. have played in Europe. And it's uh, all competition? Yes. Right, okay. So Tavernier is number seven with 115. The, the man at the top is quite well clear with 253. And just ahead of Tavernier in sixth spot is a Scottish defender. Any suggestions? Come on, Bobby. So it's those that take set pieces and penalties, isn't it? Um, Roberto uh, Carlos. Uh, that Carlos. Roberto Carlos is number 10. Uh, he would have been my guess, yeah. I have to say. Um, then you would say maybe uh, Ramos, he scores. Sergio Ramos, he not score a lot? For, yep, uh, Ramos is in at number five. The, the, the number one uh, also went on to have, a, I think, a fairly successful career as a manager as well. Dutch. Oh, Koeman. Yep, bang Ronald on, Michael. Koeman. Ronald Koeman, yeah, well done, Amy. And the Scottish defender, he's in at number six. I, I wouldn't have got this. Somebody that takes penalties, clearly. Yes, yes. Scottish defender. Oh, I'll tell you, no. Go for uh, it, Chick. Oh, no, I think no, you're no, going to get it, Chick. Uh, oh, no, because... He's, he's, no. he's also been he's a manager. He's been a manager. Yeah, he's I know been that, a manager. What's his name? He just got the sack. <laughs> he did, but he's got another job very quickly. Ah, he brought... Uh, Graham Alexander. Oh, Graham Alexander. Yeah, that was, I couldn't it. get his name. <laughs> <laughs> it was only your description that got me that. I was never oh, getting that myself there. <laughs> uh, he's number six. Cumin passed it there. I don't think there's a whole list there, but he's in at number six. James Tavernier has entered that list. Cumin was number seven. one. Cumin, Ronald Cumin was number one. Well clear. What, 75, 70, 78 goals clear to be exact. And actually, Stephen Craig. 78 goals clear? Yeah, of everyone else. Wow. And actually, I think I'm going to give this to Stephen Craig, and he's just messaged me with, with Cumin, and I think he's started with Graham Alexander, and I think given the delay, he was probably first. I'm going to give it to Stephen Shut Craig. Shut up! <laughs> actually, the fact that it was on Twitter this week is neither here nor there. Ah, There's exactly. a delay uh, for part. Yeah, Derek. Can we. You there, Derek? Got a VAR check, yeah. yeah. I just had my head down, I've missed it, to be honest with you. Uh, it was just no, uh, it's OK, now you need VAR, notes. you don't want it. To, <laughs> VAR will tell you what the yeah. decision would be. I've just, just in fact, it's in your English, were you? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to look at the monitor. Right, what's what's the I think there was a coming together between Boyce. Boyce looks if he tried I to just... turn the defender. I, I was the same trying to think of that uh, defender. Um, we'll wait for some pictures coming through, I'll give you a description. 
Aye, we think it's a high I explained a lot, Bobby, over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the name of the sports <laughs> don't start. <laughs> <laughs> we have still not seen a replay of this, but we're told it's for a high foot, so the referee is over having So what are we in his ear right now? The VAR so people are talking The VAR pictures are coming through, let's see. So they'll present what they believe is the best image for the referee to yeah, make an show, informed they'll decision. Show my, they'll show so, a yep. still picture of somebody getting kicked in the head. <laughs> so, the, the still image is seen, yep, so now we're seeing it at about 50%. percent so still image and there's contact to the chest. This will be awarded as a penalty kick. Probably the only debate will be Who inside, outside. So it's like going to be a penalty kick to Hearts. Hearts. It's on, right. boys. It, so you're giving a penalty, are you giving a red card there? No, I think his intention is to play the ball. It's not if he's had see a yellow card for reckless play and a penalty kick two hearts, I think will be the outcome of this VAR can I, just, can I just say that the still picture of that is ludicrous and should never have been shown. And, and that was the first image and then they showed yes. it at fifty percent. Now that's they're why, showing it in real but time. That's why I'm saying the still picture shouldn't even be shown. And that, it should never be shown. That's a good point, isn't it? I, I think it should come after if you want absolute clarity and where the point of contact if the intensity is right. there. Um, but I totally agree. I think the foot that when the referee arrived there, we know it was there's the image and immediately. Yeah, given up. Right, okay, Derek. Who's it's going to be Shanklin? Isn't it looking for his right, second? So Bobby got here. that in seconds. How does it take in two minutes to get? Bobby, you got that. You I got have that. No, I, he's pointing it. No, it's not been given. Well, there you go, Bobby. Here we go. He's pointing. It. We need. It looked as wow. if he was pointing to a penalty kick, and all of a sudden, no, nope, it's not given. So now it looks as if he's going to be start playing with that. Drop ball. Drop ball. Right, are you shocked at that? You clearly are. I, I'm shocked. I'm wondering the on-field decision penalty kick that we've missed while we're doing our quiz. But even if it's he had given an on-field penalty, why would it like not then be given? I think it must have been that still picture that he was showing, and it clearly, <laughs> it clearly showed that it wasn't a penalty. The only, the only thing that for me was up for debate there was, was it in the box or not? And that's if he's restarted with a drop ball. So how he's get, he must have awarded the penalty kick and they've come back out of it. If it was offside anywhere, they'd have started with offside. So it's, yeah, it just is giving so the wrong Bobby, on field decision. So Bobby, would he not be able to then just give a free kick rather than a penalty kick? If it's outside, he would yeah. have done that, which suggests to me I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely unclear how he stopped the game because we're playing the quiz. He's just been struck with the ball there. Um, but the, but the, the point, the main point for me is from what you've seen, the pictures you've seen, you're giving a penalty. That looks like a penalty kick to me. What, what is he hearing in his ear then? When, is, is he getting so, advice? He's just... not getting advice. No, they'll present the image and he will make... He's the ultimate decision-maker. They believe that there's a decision there that requires review and then they'll present the images that they believe presents the clearest image but, of that situation. Then he makes the decision. He's not been given advice. They don't offer an opinion. The VAR does not but, offer an opinion. Bobby, this is our entertainment business and the crowd, like you and, and people that are watching it, haven't got a clue what's going on or what's been given. or, or I know it's a free kick, but why? They've got to come out with an explanation of what's happening here. And I think that's where rugby benefits, doesn't it? I think that a lot of people would love to see, hear the interaction between the VAR and the referee. Um, and then have some, putting a VAR check on a screen in a stadium means nothing to those, those in the stadium. Bobby, uh, you, you say that the, 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 the VAR referee doesn't give advice, but mm -hmm. do you not think the, the mere fact that they ask the ask. referee to go and have a look at it. Exactly. The referee is thinking that that is advice. Ex absolutely. They wouldn't yeah. offer an opinion, but, yeah. but the fact that they invite him for an on-field review suggests he believes the referee's made a mistake or missed an incident. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to look at that again and see... I mean, does the defender completely miss him? That You you, you know, you look at it from another angle and you see that, but certainly the, I saw a still picture and I saw one uh, replay of it. Granted, it wasn't from a great position that I'm looking at it, but it looked, you know, clear as day that there was some sort of fill. It certainly, listen, it certainly looked that way. The pictures we've got coming into the studio here. Morton have equalised away at part of this old Grant Gillespie on 32 minutes. So your latest score lines across the country this afternoon. Dundee 1, St Mirren 0, Bakayoko with a goal there on 16 minutes. Hibs 0, Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 0, Hearts 1, Shankland on 27 minutes. St Johnston 0, Ross County 0. In the Championship, Airdrie 1 are both 0. Inverness, Cali Thistle 1, Air United nil. That goal has just come through for the home side there. David Wotherspoon, he scored again. What a signing he could turn out to be. He scored there on 32 minutes. So 1 0 to the home side there. Part of Thistle 1, Morton 1, Queen's Park 0, Wraith Rovers 0. In League 1, Alloa 0, Queen of the South 0. Still Falkirk 0, Edinburgh City 1, Hamilton Ackies 1, Stirling Albion 0, Kelty Hearts 0, Cove Rangers 1. Montrose nil, and an Athletic one. 
in League Two. East Fife nil, Dumbarton one, Elgin City nil, Bonnie Rig Rose nil, Forfar nil, Clyde nil. Looks like a goal is just coming through from for Peter. It's not hit the video printer yet, but it's saying they are two one up now at home. Peter Head in their game. Goal, Easter Road. It's the home side. Josh Campbell has found the back of the net. Martin Boyle was, was on the deck as he was on the edge of the box. He managed to get up off the ground and slip the ball inside right channel. Josh Campbell was coming in at the angle and he just seems to pass it right through the goalkeeper. Not too sure whether it was one of those that was too close to the keeper in an awkward position or whether it's just a bit of a howler and he should have saved it. But certainly, uh, Bobby, if you could, sorry, Mike, if you have a look at this, I don't know what's happened here to St Johnson. Robinson, it's was a, was a simple throw in, and I think it's Latouris went right over the back of Robinson. The ball's not even in play. Well, I think the referee oh, will fantastic. take so we'll just see, a somersault. I'm we'll sure replay of that now. Ah, either, yep, he's leaned forward and he's going to pull them over the top, but it looks like I don't think there'll be any intervention here. It's, it's quite a move, though. He's managed to somehow flip the player standing behind him over his head. Um, a judo move. It looks like that. I think there's going to probably be a, a discussion between referee Nick Walsh and both players. Um, I wouldn't imagine it will go beyond that. In terms well, it of the is goal, going beyond that. It's a yellow H. Ah, I see that. Bobby, see um, the decision at Fur Park. Could that, because I'm, I'm trying to remember how the game started, could it have been, because I've just watched, a, I've been sent a, a, a clip of it, could that have been for it looked like it might have come off of Liam Boyce's arm. Arm, it, it did, uh, Michael. I've just Aye. seen it myself as so well. Yeah, could that have been given as a handball though? Because it, it didn't. Mm. It wasn't a free kick they gave, was it? He started ball? with a drop ball. Yeah. So that would suggest he might have actually awarded that penalty kick live. Yep. And then the handball would then you would restart with the, with the drop the, ball. So, it would, so, so if it was a handball that decided, it would still be a drop ball that would be the, the restart. The, yeah, because you're giving a penalty right. kick. Okay, do, you, well, do, you want to, do you want to see a replay of it, Bobby? Do you want to have another look at it? Yeah. Ah, here. So I'll give you a look at that. Um, there was a second goal for Peter Head. It's just come through. Scott Ross on 33 minutes, hands then 2 1 up at home to Stranra. Confirmation, Michael, that Josh Campbell goal. Great play from Boyle, but I think you'd have to say the keeper should have done a whole lot better in that one. A big, big goal for Hibson. Talk to us about Josh Campbell. He's a decent young player, isn't he, Michael? Yeah, and he's, um, well, he's somebody that obviously he's not played a great deal under Nick Montgomery, but um, you know previously he was playing um, and he'd got into a bit of a, a rhythm and scored quite a few goals. But he's another one that, you know, at that stage in his, his career, a good young player, but I know he scored quite a few goals, but he's one that I just look to get. And I want a wee bit more from Goal! him. Goal! Yeah, Chip. Yes, Lewis Bond for Braith Throwers with a breakthrough after 38 and a half minutes. A lovely bit of skill through the old inside right channel. Just put it on his right foot, chose his spot and put it beyond Callum Ferry, who incidentally just a couple of moments ago did a fantastic double save for Queen's Park, but it's a goal for Lewis Vaughan. Ray Throbles ahead at Hamden. Yeah, they're going very, very well in the league, staying on the coattails of the United. United with a narrow victory away at Dunfermline last night. Quite a late goal there, winning by two goals to one. Have you had a, another chance to look at that one, Bobby? The, the, the incident at Fair Park? No, I think you were going to send it through. I'll have a look uh, once I have a look right. at it. So it's, um, not it's not good through yet. Right, OK, so Josh Campbell going 36 minutes. Michael, yeah, you're just saying you're, you're looking for a bit more from Josh Campbell. There's clearly potential there. Yeah, I mean, there is, yes, but um, granted, he's you know he's been out the team since Nick Montgomery. Um, he's not played uh, you know a great deal, and um, I, I think, you know, at the stage he's at now, you just want and are looking for the next progression, yet he started to add some goals in the last year to his game, which is good. But also, he's you know where is he going to be as a as a midfielder? He's playing a lot higher up, um, laterally. And is he going to be almost like a, a number ten or an out and out striker? Is he going to be you know a central midfielder? Just trying to understand where he's going to make the most of his of his talent. But um, the biggest thing for him is that he needs to get back in the side and playing some some more games, which has obviously happened in the last uh, last two. And for him to score a, a goal, that'll be very good for his confidence as well. Yeah, big goal for the home side there. Nick Montgomery was speaking during the, his frustration from winning positions and also very, very unlucky, you'd have to say, in that semi-final at Hamden last weekend. But, you know, Falkirk have just gone ahead. 
Aidan Nisbet is equal, sorry, equalised at home to Edinburgh City. Aidan Nisbet on 40 minutes, but Aberdeen did the business against Hibs last weekend. We'll get Bobby's thoughts on that penalty shot for Hibs a little later in the programme. We've had a look at that replay now, Bobby, and I've got a message from someone who's actually at that game at Fir Park saying the referee didn't give a penalty. He gave Motherwell a free kick as his first decision. So he's there. So talk, talk to us about that process. So he sees that, he thinks, that's a free kick, I'm giving a free kick. Then what happens? So then I would suggest that the, the VAR believes that it's a penalty kick and he's asked the referee to come and review that if he wants to award a, a penalty kick to Hearts. When he's went over to look at the decision, he's then decided it's not a penalty kick, but I don't understand why he would restart with a drop ball. Yeah, that, that, surely yeah. That, that couldn't happen. It can't be that a, a free kick was given to Motherwell because surely it would have just continued to be a free kick, the restart. And, and that's what I would... I'm looking Aye. at the potential... There's people are seeing a potential handball in the build-up by boys. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was. I mean, well, look, my, my, my way of thinking was that it was a penalty that was given and then it looks like it's not been given because it was a hand, potential handball from Liam Boyce. That's the only thing that makes any sense to me. So that, that, that's, that's, it's rare, should, a free kick, well, should then be a free kick to Motherwell, surely? Then yes, but Bobby was saying that it could, because if he gave a penalty to begin with, if he's gone over and looked at it and then seen a handball, that a restart would have been the drop ball that actually did happen. That would make sense. Is that right, Bobby? It would, yep. yeah. But I think but when I'm the chap saying that he gave a free yeah, kick. Yeah, which doesn't seem to make any sense no. because if a free kick was given, clearly the penalty's not been given. I don't know how then you could start with a re like a drop ball yeah, to Motherwell. Right. Yeah, you restart. Just go with the free kick. Yes. You restart yep. the free kick. Yeah. And so I mean, that, that's that's very unusual, then, isn't it? Because it's been a criticism here. I think Willie spoke about it earlier, but perhaps the referee feeling under pressure when he's called over to reverse the decision. So it's quite unusual for him not to do that. No, but he might, well, uh, yes, if the if the free kick was given in the first instance, but that's, that that's I'm being told from someone at the ground. Well, but yeah, well, I don't well, know that. Well, here's the thing, Kenny. Who at the ground actually knows what's happened? And that's another criticism exactly, of Exactly, Michael, exactly. We, we, we were at St Mirren during the week there. Yep. And obviously we were told that, you know, there was a pull on the jersey. But you don't you don't get to see any replays when you're at the, the ground as a, as a punter. And a lot of the times when we're there, we have monitors and we do see it. But during the week, obviously, it was just the radio. There wasn't any monitors. You're, you're in the dark to a great extent. Yeah, it'd be lovely if the fans you'd be able to see. They've got, they've got the big scoreboards there in the corner at St. Mimby Great, and if something could be flashed up there and they can make their own mind up. And perhaps that would add to the drama. But you're right, you're standing there, you're waiting a long time to find out what's happened. I still actually haven't seen that decision. I, I meant to look it up when I went back later on that night, but I still haven't seen that. And you're but meant I, to message me later on as well, and you've still not done that. I, I know, I know, and I will do that. I will do that. So, the... the you're in the black goal. book. You're in the black book, uh, Listen, Listen, I have been for a number of years. I, I just I just find I can't win with them, to be honest, <laughs> Willie. You know, I try and I try, and I keep getting it wrong. <laughs> he'll, he'll get me right one day. Hamilton and the Hackies have got 2-0 up at home to Stirling Albion. Ewan Henderson on 38 minutes. And Aidan Nesbitt, as I told you, at equaliser for Falk at home to Edinburgh City. And that's you right up to date with the latest scores. Willie Miller, what's happening at Dens Park? I haven't seen as many players just two yards off the goal line in my, my career as of, in my lifetime, actually, as I've just witnessed there. Um, it was Dundee, um, you know, putting the corner kick into the box. Uh, just everybody, just about everybody in the pitch in that six yard box. So it came of nothing. It's, it's pretty even. I, I think uh, St. Murn have got a, a grip in the midfield. They seem to be the boss in that area. Um, but Dundee are looking, you know, really potent on the break. Whenever they get a chance to go forward, they go forward on the break very, very uh, quickly. And obviously they've got the two target men up front to, uh, to hit, and they've got excellent support from uh, the, the, the three midfield players as well, two in particular, um, you know, Cameron and McCowan. So it's, it's, it's very even, although obviously Dundee have got that breakthrough goal. Yeah, and as things stand, fifth in the table. What a Penalty! season, Tony Yorker. Yes! Penalty to Dundee. Wow. Referee is given a penalty. Spots a corner from the uh, left-hand side. It's Owen Beck that puts it in. Shaughnessy goes for it. He gets a little bit on it, and it comes off the arm of uh, a St Mirren defender there, and the referee's right on the spot, and he points to that penalty spot. So Dundee have got the opportunity to go 2-0 up here. And the pictures are just coming through. Well, yep, the ball's played in from the corner on the left-hand side, headed towards the goal. I need to see another angle on that. Yep. Come on, Bobby, just <laughs> Is it Mark O'Hara that's... It's hard to see, it's not a great angle. It's that not, it, no, there's no, no point. 
He's not playing. Is he not playing? He's not playing. I saw, I saw, I saw it's a captain's armband. I, I, saw, I was looking out there. Maybe I'm wrong. Marcus Fraser's got captain's armband. Maybe it's him then. I just saw the armband. It's not a good... We've actually not had a good shot yeah, yet. Anyway, it's Zach Rudden that's uh, going to take it, so no intervention. Um, the penalty has been given. He's got the opportunity. Half time. Right it, on half time. Right half time on half time. Half time at 47 minutes in my life. Don't come to me for a half time. Nothing happened. It was wrong. I'm going to cover it. Uh, you have to go through it, Alan. You have to go through it like the rest of us. <laughs> No ducking, but we've got a penalty here, so it's all excitement to hear it dance and Zach Rudden just waiting as the referee goes down, has a conversation with everybody. Everybody knows that they can't go into the box, so why do you have to tell them <laughs> every time that you can't run into the box? Anyway, that's what the referee has done. Rudden is now running up with the right foot, strikes in, puts it into the back of the net, puts the goalkeeper the wrong way. There's a little lap of honour round the goal, celebrates it with uh, um, a wave fans. And over to the home fans, Dundee go 2-0 up just before half-time. I mean, for, for Dundee supporters, back into the top flight, they currently sit fifth in the table, just behind Hearts on goal Kenny, that's half-time at Hamden. It's a good spot, now Red Rovers won. Half-time, Kenny, below now, half one. Thanks, guys. So still playing at Inverness, Cali Festival. My goodness, David Wotherspoon has scored again. 2-0 up now at home to Air United. That second goal coming on 43 minutes. Four for nil. Clyde nil, half time Allen nil, Queen of the South nil. Half time Easter Road as well, Kenny, 1 0 to the home side. Thank you, Michael. Arsenal have gone 1 0 up at home to Burnley in first half. Stoppage time, Trossard with the goal there. That's a big goal for them as they push to try and mount a title challenge. And the half time score lines coming through across the country. Queen's Park nil, Wraith, Rovers 1. Half time, so, Kenny. Thanks, Willie. 2 0 for Dundee. What a first half score line for the home side there. So just looking round the grounds, we seem to be at half time in all of the games this afternoon. Looking at the top flight, I think we're just seeing the screens coming into the studio now. Just are you still playing Amy in your game? Yeah, still going, Kenny. I think we must just have seconds left, Julia. Really. I can't quite understand why there's so much additional time. Just as Airdrie once again going on the attack, Nikolai Todorov really has been growing into this game. Still fairly even. Falkirk 1, Edinburgh City 1, that is a half-time. East 5 nil. Dumbarton 1, also a half-time scoreline. So just waiting for that game to finish there. Airdrie ahead against our bro. They are having an absolutely terrific season, you would have to say. They and are ahead. And half-time, Ken. Half-time, second in the table behind Dundee United. So all the half-time reports coming up in sports and Alan Preston will have to find some form of words to describe what's happened in the first half at McDermott Park. All that to come on Sports Sound. All the grounds, all the goals, all the news. This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound. From BBC Radio Scotland. You're listening to Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland. So, looking around the grounds this afternoon, the half time score lines in the Premiership Dundee 2, St Mirren 0, Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 0, Hearts 1, St Johnston 0, Ross County 0. In the Championship, Airdrie 1, Arbroath 0, Inverness Cali Thistle 2, Air United 0, Partick Thistle 1, Morton 1. Queen's Park 0, Wraith Rovers 1 in League 1, Alloa 0, Queen of the South 0, Falkirk 1, Edinburgh City 1, Hamilton Ackies 2, Stirling Albion 0, Kelty Hearts 0, Cove Rangers 1, Montrose 0, Annan Athletic 1 in League 2, East Fife 0, Dumbarton 1, Elgin City 0, Bonnie Regrose 0, Forfar Athletic 0, Clyde 0, Peterhead 2, Stranraer 1, Stenismuir 0, Spartans 1 and in England it finished at lunchtime Wolves 2, Spurs 1, halftime Arsenal 1, Burnley 0, Crystal Palace 1, Everton 1, Manchester United 0, Luton Town 0 and the 5.30 kickoff, Bournemouth at home to Newcastle United. Let's then get round the grounds and get the halftime reports. What a first half, Willie Miller, for the home side at Dens Park. Kenny's been wonderful for uh, the fans here, thoroughly enjoying the first half endeavour from their uh, uh, team out there. And uh, they, they deserve to be in the lead. It's not a case that uh, St Murn have been out of the game. They've had long periods where they've dominated the midfield in particular, but 
you know, St Mirren haven't really um, created any opportunities, uh, haven't uh, threatened that uh, Dundee goal at all. McMenamin possibly uh, the only one with a shot that actually went by the post. So, you know, I think uh, Carson and Goals had a very easy uh, first 45 minutes. On the other hand, you, you know, they look, Dundee look really positive going forward. Uh, they've got the two strikers up top. They get the ball forward there. A lot of support from midfield and they push out from the back as well but it's two set pieces that has cost um, St Mirren and uh, coming from the left hand side two corners from that side uh, both taken by Owen Beck the first one is uh, put into the delivery's good it's into the uh, six yard box but it should have been dealt with it's not clear the ball pops up in there and Bakayoko as he's fallen just round about the penalty spot he's fallen to the ground and he just smashes it with the left foot into the back of the net as well, taking on the volley uh, to give uh, D Dundee the lead. And then as the game went on, it was it was quite even. Each of peaks uh, in, in terms of uh, ball possession, apart from that midfield area. Um, but Zach Rudden get the opportunity from the penalty spot. It was a corner again from Owen Beck. It was put in Joe Shaughnessy this time, gets a little flick on, and it hits uh, Marcus Fraser in the arm. The referee's no doubt right on the spot as well to see it. Points to the spot. Jack Rudden then steps up and drills it into the back of the net, right on that half-time mark. So here, it's perfect for the, the home fans. It's Dundee 2 and St Mirren 0. Thank you, Willie. There's also been a, a late penalty scored in the first half stoppage time. Inverness, Cali Thistle now 3-0 up at home to Air United. Billy Mackay with that goal after a double from David Wotherspoon. Let's then get to Michael Stewart, the home side, also in control at Easter Road, Michael. They are now that uh, they've got that 1-0 lead at uh, half-time, but the, the first half's been pretty even. Kilmarnock started quite brightly. But, um, I said just uh, about halfway through, it was uh, one end to the other without either goalkeeper having too much to do. There hasn't been uh, too many shots on, on goal and too many goal-mouth incidents, but uh, 36 minutes was when Hibbs managed to get the, uh, the lead and it was Josh Campbell on the inside right channel. Martin Boyle sliding on the ground. He managed to get up and just slip the ball into that inside right for Josh Campbell to come stepping in and passing it into the back of the net. I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, the away goalkeeper, Will Dennis, should have been doing better. And, uh, and Kilmarnock, they've huffed and puffed in the final third and uh, not been able to really put David Marshall under too much pressure, I'm sure. Dennis McInnes will be uh, passing on the message at half-time that uh, certainly they've got to be more clinical in the final third if they're going to try and get something out of this game and make sure that uh, Hibs, who now sit one point behind them, aren't going to be as close as that at the end of the 90 minutes. Thank you to Michael Stewart. We'd like to challenge our pundits on Sports Sound this afternoon. Alan Preston is at McDermott Park, St Johnson against Ross County. So, Alan, a match, a half-time match report, please. That's the worst 47 <laughs> minutes I've seen so far this season, and good luck to sports scene trying to get something out of this. Uh, even the St Johnston commentator for the, the, the home, obviously, the, the fans that are watching abroad, for them, he wants to go home as well. It's, the, it's been really poor. Kerry had a shot in 28 minutes, which is about 10 yards wide, and Allardyce had a shot on target, which I could have saved with the old gloves that they used to have, <laughs> table tennis bats, the yellow and green ones on. It's been really, really poor stuff. I'm hoping it has to get better. It can't get any worse. Half-time score, St Johnson nil, Ross County absolutely nil. You did well, Alan Preston. Derek Ferguson, plenty to talk about in your game at Fir Park. Yeah, good game as well, but a controversy as well, which I'll come to in a minute. But both teams, Kennedy started in confident mode. Uh, considering the recent form of late uh, was the home side that the first opportunity uh, to open the score in the three minutes it was Bain just a corner kick from Spittle going the right hand uh, side finding Bain eight yards out as I said unmarked but heading well wide Hearts started to push forward and passed up a wonderful chance in 17 minutes Lowry the main man playing in Boyce but the front man taking far too many touches then dragging his shot wide of the target from about 10 yards out but Hearts did get the opener in 27 minutes a Lowry corner finding Kent at the back post nodding the ball down to Lauren Shanklin he's only a couple of yards out to ease the ball over the line uh, from close range that VAR decision the controversy I'm talking about was it a handball just outside the box from Boyce I'm not sure was a, uh, was a contact inside the box to give a penalty I'm hearing that it was minimal contact so the penalty kick was not given 
So, um, yeah, I was, uh, uh, as a lot of the people in the ground at the moment, in the dark about that. But what uh, is sure today is that Hearts are in the driving seat at half-time. It's Motherwell now, Hearts won. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, we're getting some more information here. So I I'm being told with someone at the ground that the referee blew his whistle. He didn't give any decision, hence the drop ball. So you can't obviously just stop the game and then let VAR decide. So just when you see a clip through to me, Kenny, I think there's a potential that the referee stopped the game because Boyce actually goes down and holds his head after right. the contact with the foot. So maybe the referee believes there's a head injury, so he stops the game to allow him to assess the head injury. But then the VAR, Kevin Clancy, thinks, oh, I believe that's a penalty kick, asked the referee over. So there was an on-field review, but the referee didn't believe it was a penalty and restarts with the drop ball. He, he, the referee deemed not enough contact. Yep, for me, I've looked at it there. There is, and you're right, it's minimal contact, but we're talking about minimal contact of a boot on somebody's chest. So you need to then determine is that careless or reckless? Does that qualify a foul? And, and, and Bobby, this is the issue that a lot of fans have. It's the inconsistency, isn't it? And, and there will always be inconsistency with subjective decisions. Yeah. And that's why I think when you go back, remove referee, remove VAR from these decisions. And I think everyone would be happier. Definitely the spectators in the stadium would be happier. And I think a lot of the pundits, that's a, the clip's just coming through again there on the screen. Right, it's just um, seeing it now. And the referee just blows his whistle, doesn't point a direction. So you normally point towards either goal to indicate which direction. I don't believe it is a handball by Boyce. Um, I think he stopped play looking at that for potentially a head knock. I think that I think you're absolutely right. We're seeing Boyce holding his, his head, head there. And I, I, I believe the referees may be thinking, that's a head knock. But how is a head knock to happen? But while the play, play has been stopped, VAR, Kevin Clancy... Do, do, do you know what I'm penalty. also going to say here, and I think it's important to say this, because referees got a lot of criticism. Boyce is holding his head, rolling about holding his head. He right. was hitting the chest. Correct. And, and you you know, and that's, that's ridiculous behaviour. And that doesn't help anyone, and it no. doesn't make him look particularly good either. But again, I think the VAR's looked at it and believes there's enough to award a penalty. But maybe the referee's thinking, well, no, you're holding your head. There's absolutely zero contact. Ab with absolutely. Your head. And listen, I think that's disgraceful from the player because referees get a hard time and players should do too. Let's then get into the Championship, Hamden Park, Queen's Park against Wraith Rovers. Chick Young. And uh, Great Rovers are halfway to closing the gap. Indeed, Dundee United at the top of the championship table tonight uh, as it stands. They have all three points heading back to Kirkcaldy. The lead by a goal to nil. Lewis Vaughan, the goal scorer, after 39 minutes. Composed finish inside the box. Good skill, credited to an opening and just drove it beyond Callum Ferry in the Queen's Park goal to give uh, Wraith Rovers the lead. I have to say, Queen's Park have played some fine football without really tormenting uh, Kevin Dabrowski in the Wraith Rovers goal, they've moved it well, they've got forward, they've been pacing points about their game but they just haven't been able to get the ball into the back of the net and they are being sucked in to uh, the relegation mire I have to say, seventh as the game kicked off uh, to, to this afternoon uh, and they're looking really in the rear view mirror where they were so close to getting into the Premiership at the end of last season, a lot has happened then at Hamden since then a lot may happen in the next 45 minutes but at the moment it is Queen's Park nil, Wraith Rovers 1 yeah, They also made a terrific start to this season as well, Queen's Park, but as Chick said there they've really fallen away let's then get to Airdrie against our bro there for us, Amy Canavan yeah, Kenny, it's half time here and it's Airdrie Williams 1, Arbroath 0. Arbroath started the better of the two sides with Jay Bird and Scott Stewart firing the wrong side off the post. But the first real venture of note from Airdrie Williams into the away box culminated in a goal. Nikolai Todorov, last week's goal scorer, burst down the left hand side, shot and forced a decent save from Derek Gaston, but it fell very kindly into the path of the on rushing Liam McStravick, who slammed home from nearby. Gaston pulled out another very good save to deny Todorov from his head this time from very close range. Other than that, though, not too much in the way of goal mouth action. But as it stands, the newly promoted Airdrie shoot into the playoff of places. A fairly even affair where at half time it's Airdrie Unions 1, Arbroath 0. Thank you to Amy Canavan. Looking then at the live table in the Championship, United four points clear off Wraith Rovers, but Rovers do have a game in hand. So 31 points United, 27 points Rovers. Thistle currently drawing there in 20. Airdrie in the playoff spots in, on 17 points. Into Fairman, Air United, as Chick said, Queen's Park getting drawn in there in seventh spot, 13 points. Cali Thistle, big improvement under Duncan Ferguson, cruising today, 3 0 lead for them at home to Air United. They are in 12 points, are both in 12 points. Morton, bottom of the table, on nine points. European dreams live here. Wonderful goal for Scotland! We now 
are going to go to a major finals with belief. We're in Germany next year. Happy days. <laughs> We've reached Euro 2024 with two games to spare. The Georgia game and the Norway game at home. Now Steve Clark's men will be looking to finish the qualifiers in style. The action continues with Georgia versus Scotland. Thursday from four. After that game, the off the ball special, bringing you petty and ill informed reflection. Magnificent Scotland! Listen on digital radio or ask your smart speaker to play BBC Radio Scotland Extra. Chance, chance, chance! And it's a goal! Oh, what a goal! Oh! All the action from all the biggest games. Oh, it's the second goal! Oh! This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. You're listening to Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland. A reminder there, a big week of international action ahead. Full coverage on this channel. I have to say it's been a great addition having off the ball after the live match programme. So all that to look forward to its domestic action to the four this afternoon for you. Some of the games up and running. Just a reminder of the latest score lines in the top flight. Dundee 2, St Mirren 0, Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 0, Hearts 1, St Johnston 0, Ross County 0. Let's then get to Willie Miller. A terrific first half from the home side there, Willie. Big disappointment for St Mirren fans. They've been terrific this season. Absolutely, Kenny. Um, a big disappointment uh, for um, Stephen Robinson and well, so much so. And don't ask me to name them, but it looks like four subs that are going on at this moment in time. Um, so I'm trying to note them down. I think I'll, young Jameson, Willie, just seen the, who scored who scored the equaliser. Yeah, he's on. I th yeah, yeah, I think I saw him coming on. Olesanya yeah, has just come on. on. He's got Charles real pace. Dunn. My Charles goodness, Dunn. Charles Dunn. Charles Dunn as well and I'll, I'll pick that up as, yeah, <laughs> as the game goes on changes. but uh, yeah totally disappointing from a St Mern point of view and obviously Stephen Robinson not uh, accepting that and making the changes at half time in the hope that they can turn it round but Dundee are playing well playing with a lot of energy and a lot of confidence um, and as I said you know whenever they get the ball they get it uh, forward early they get good support as well and th they've got these two goals and you know it, there's not a more perfect time to score it in the first half than just before the half time whistle that takes them in with that lead but uh, Stephen Robinson trying to turn it around making all these changes and uh, hopefully trying to get back into this game what does Derek McInnes need to change Michael to get back into the game Easter Road it's got to be a bit more uh, ruthless at the top end of the part of the uh, you know, obviously, Kyle Vassell's not playing today. It's just Marley Watkins. David Watson's up trying to support him. They've, uh, they've not really been able to create too many opportunities in, um, in the first half, and they're going to have to do that a bit better in this second if they're going to look to try to um, open up this Hibs side. And big questions, obviously, for, for Hibs in regards to are they going to be able to um, hold on to a, a lead? You know, there's been so many draws and so many draws from positions where they've, uh, they've actually been in front. Now they're at home playing against a, you know, a good, strong side, but are they going to be able to change things in this, uh, in this game and make sure they can actually pick up three points here this afternoon? Elgin City 1-0 up at home to Bonnie Ray Gros. Rory McEwen with the goal in that game. Let's then get to Derek Ferguson at Fair Park. We saw a real moment of controversy there. But we also saw a goal from Lauren Shanklin. He's so key for Hearts. It's not just a great striker. It's his movement, it's his influence. He's a captain on the side, Derek. Yeah, but sometimes you don't need to move, Kenny. That's what he done. He just stood still, you know, and uh, he let Kent uh, find him with the ball. Uh, Motherwell have made a change, Kenny Bear did, there was a little chance there, just at the front post area, yeah, it was Kingsley just coming in there, just, it was, I tell you what, it was probably good, to, it was a good block anyway at the front uh, front post area, but they made a change, Bear didn't have the best of first half, Spencer has come on, so they're into their normal shape, 3-5-2 now, uh, Motherwell, but, uh, but I had to agree with you, Kenny, I was listening to you, you know, when I watched the replay a couple of times, I said I missed it in real time, it was another opportunity, Shanklin, just inside that six-yard box, just trying to, you know, kind of, it's not a scissor kick because he's not left the ground, but, you know, shown his flexibility, but uh, didn't get the ball on target there. But, no, I, I totally agree with you, you know, Boyce, because when I lifted my head, Boyce is holding his, uh, holding his head, yeah. you know, and I'm thinking, oh, it must have been a kick in the head. When you see the replay, it's clearly, you know, it's, 
It's not. It's in the contact is minimal. It's on the chest. So why you try to con the referee? And this is something we need to get rid of as well. Derek, but, uh, Derek do you not think though that that is another example? Because having looked at it, it's yeah. it's absolutely it's bare minimum contact. And I've got to applaud the referee because he's absolutely spot on with his decision there. And obviously VAR's suggesting otherwise. But that is another perfect example of why you don't show a still. That referee went yeah. over there, and the still he was looking Michael, at was Ma that, he, that yeah. Boyce was getting kicked in the chest. Yeah, Michael, I totally agree with you with the stills. I think when you go over to the monitor, and this is just my opinion, I think you should look at it in real time, yes. two or three times, and then make that decision. Yep. Because, uh, you know, once you slow it down, once you have a still, it can look horrendous at times, it can look bad. So, no, it, my opinion as you go, you see it two or three times in the real time, make your decisions. But I, I'm so disappointed in boys because when you see that replay, you know, clearly try to con the referee, and it's something that don't, we don't want in the game. Yes, the out. referee has got a hard enough job, we know that, you know, without players trying to con the ref. I think you're right, I think the first image I seen was that still and immediately think, oh, you cannot kick someone on the chest but then when you see it at real time, you see it at probably 50% speed you realise the contact is minimal so I think the referee, people will applaud him because he's gone over and he's made his own decision he's stuck to his original decision so that's what people want to see more of Right, Alan Preston, you just want to see more of anything there, don't well, you, Kenny, I was Park. thinking, honestly, if both clubs decide to bring a DVD out of the first 47 <laughs> minutes, I've got a title, 101 great throw-ins. That's been dreadful. <laughs> I and thought they were can... passing it out from the back. <laughs> they were, but they're not going anywhere, Michael. They're so the Craigleveen the... influence is not working so far it's there today. It's very deep, it's very, very deep. Well, you Pass could argue it is working. <laughs> 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 it's just not, it's not a classic so far. I'm hoping it gets better in the second half, I really and it's a big incentive for St Johnson because they've been bottom of the table for a long time. Just as I say that, they got shot, no, blocked, the other one blocked, no. Nah, that's a wait, no, no, no chance, no, no. See, see just on VAR, I, I'll ask, actually ask Bobby just one other instant before we get your thoughts, because we had a big debate on it earlier on, and I'm going to ask oh, the fans... It's in the bar! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You're making that up. Look at this. I'm not Nicky Clark is. It's a brilliant take from him. Pulls it down and hooks it with his left foot and it hits off the underside of the bar. Different St Johnson and an effort for Carey. Well saved. St Johnson coming out in the second half has shown a bit of it intent at last. Still no, no, but that's a couple of decent efforts there. Tactical Kenny, sorry. genius from Craig Kenny, Levine. Yes. Kenny, sorry, I, was just, I forgot to say to you just at half time there that Marty Kennedy has uh, come on and uh, Liam uh, Donnelly has gone off, so... A little bit of a change. Brad Lines, who was playing a lot on this oh! left-hand side, he's gone centrally, and Matty Kennedy is on on the left-hand side for Kamarnik. Thank you, Chick. Oh, Kamarnik should be... Kamarnik? Goonspark should be in level terms. It was Jack Turner. A ball was absolutely whipped across there. Turner's made a great run. Oh, he's he going to come this way. a chance for Danda. He's got Chance for Danda. He's on the left-hand left, left -hand side. Step over. Oh, hits it just over. Much better. Second half. Chance for Ross County. St Johnson at the corner, there's a quick breakout. Ball's eventually played to Danda. It's a lovely step over, taking on his left foot and hits it just over the bar. And you still predicted no, no. goals, didn't you? I'm still predicting goals. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Here we go. I think your idea hit the bar. It sounded more and more like Chick. Aye, and, and, he, and he, was caught, he was caught out a couple of weeks ago with that game. What was the game again? Was it Queen's Park? And can't remember. What, Mike? I was caught out. Ah, the one where you were predicting loads of goals. We had a, a wee trail with myself and Liam were chatting about it. What was the game? I can't remember. It was Queen's Park against uh, somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> right, I listen, I, 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 want, I want to go around your, your, just to get your thoughts. We're going to ask the fans later who will be joining us in sports round on until 7 o'clock tonight. Keith Lasley is choosing the music for us this evening. I think some great choices in there, so stay tuned for that. Lots of fans coming on to the Pro will get their thoughts. In terms of our keep it or bin it, if you had your choice, if it was your decision, Michael Stewart, what would you do? Well, I said it months ago, bin it. And I've not changed my, my view. Yep. It's not going to get binned, so then realistically, what, what needs to happen? It needs to be massively reformed. Willie? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, uh, you know, have a look at it. If you can, I don't know. Is it up? Michael, you might know. Is it up to Is it up to the authorities, our authorities at home, to change it? Can we tweak it? Well, Could we, for instance, say that, you know, it's, it's only incidents in the penalty area? So, would, someone, would said in a accepted? someone said in a group chat to me earlier on, Bobby can maybe confirm this, that Sweden have chosen not to have it. 
So yeah, but can, can, can you make your own rules up? That's what I'm so saying. In terms of, there's a protocol that must be followed in terms of how you communicate with the referee, but in terms of level of intervention, uh -huh. the local association can determine that. Okay. Right, that's interesting. But like Edinburgh Council. They're no great, Michael, as we know. <laughs> Let's not get Parking into that. Parking permits everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dakuri has put Everton 2-1 up away at Crystal Palace. Alan, what would you do with her? I agree with Michael. I didn't want it in the first place. I'd have been, I'd been it, but it's here to stay. I'm afraid that we need to get it right. It's, um, it's For the fans, it's just horrible. It's not great. It's, it's totally detracting from the experience as a supporter. You don't know whether to celebrate a goal or what. It's just it's rubbish for me. But there it is, Alan. You, you, you could have been doing me a couple of VAR incidents in the first half. <laughs> just to me in. Exactly. So you would have something to talk it about. It does add to the drama, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. No? No. Nah. Not it's having that. Such it's a life out the the game. See the confusion, Kenny. Yeah, yeah, it, no, does. no, no. If you watch the Spurs and Chelsea game Monday night, it take it to my local recycling <laughs> centre. <laughs> on the odd, on the odd occasion that yes, there is some you know drama that's added, but not over the piece. I think it just detracts. Well, Trick, you're way, saying that happened of, on Monday night. It's one of these things that uh, you know, for the right intentions, it was all brought in, but these have been unforeseen you know consequences. And I think now that we can uh, see what's happening, it needs to change, or it just needs to go. It needs to change, but you, you can't, you, you know, you have to bear with something. At the end of the day, the pictures show what actually happened. What is making it, crit, what people are criticising is the human element interpreting what's going on, but the pictures are pictures, the pictures are evidence, and, you know, we ha I accept we have to interpret it better, and we, I've said it before and I'll say it again, we have to learn from the rugby authorities and how they use it and how they swiftly they get the message to the supporters, they mic up the referee. All of these are improvements that have to be made. But you don't, don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. It's, 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 it's evidence of what's happening. And if we lose it, as Bobby will underline, then our, our, our referees are finished getting but games in Europe. So, so, Chick, here's one for you in terms of it's uh, showing you what's actually happening. Do you think that it makes football better if somebody is penalised for being offside when it's a millimetre and it takes five minutes to come to that decision? Do you think that's for the betterment of the game? No, but it's because it's not, because again, it's under how people are interpreting it. But that's not interpretation. It's shown, it's shown, yeah, exactly, it's interpretation. That's it's not, shown in, you it's what not interpretation, happens. that's black and white. So yeah, what so it's black and... That's yeah. an incident offside that's black and white. That's not down yes. to interpretation. Agreed. So, so it's, it's, so but it's do you think black and white. Do you think that's better? No, I'm not. That's a loaded question, Michael, because it shows you what's happened. Well, it's not loaded. It it's just you a simple happened. yes or no. It shows you what's happened, and then it's down to people to say, right, if it's black and white, it's offside or it's onside. So it's the human element that's making it wrong. No, it's not. I, the pictures offside. don't lie. I, the pictures don't well, if it's offside, it's offside. Was yeah, the ball so the decision? Check, so who, check what I'm the saying here. The last game was a ball out. And, and that's, there's not a camera directly on the goal line, so, so yes... So the pictures from, don't lie, but we don't, we've not got an answer. It's not completely conclusive. But Trick's point right. is it added to the drama. Trick, you're saying that game on Monday night oh, down in England. 20-odd uh, minutes extra time played, I think, wasn't it, between the two halves? Uh, well, this is sports games you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was fantastic entertainment. And actually, ironically, the, the bar added to the drama and, and actually made it more interesting in the sense just hang on, Kenny Gay's going to be a goal for it. Oh, Queen's Park cleared off the line, what a chance. Anyway, I, I, I still think the... Uh, Michael's right in the sense it's black and white. OK, it's black and white. Just make up your mind now and, and move on. I, I, I think the delays are sometimes absolutely ridiculous. I get that. But again, photographs are photographs. The evidence is there and it's not there. It's like CCTV, you know, people say... We say don't break. You know you will have it selected the grounds. Or if if a if a crime's committed, oh, how the many center, times have you used that line on sports? Sounds. Sounds. But it's factual. <laughs> kind of, it's factual. <laughs> Becky Yoko follows up and taps into the back of the net on the break one more time. St. Milton caught. Jack Rudden goes down the right hand side, cuts into the box, drills it with his right foot. The same as Paddy out to Bakayoko who simply taps it 
into the back of the net. 3 0 Dundee. Kenny, you'll be enjoying VAR, eh? Because everybody's arguing and fighting. <laughs> <laughs> You're loving this. Uh, listen, I, I, I do. I, so, I see you sorry, know, I love the drama. Sorry for bringing football into the conversation, <laughs> by the way. But, but do you know, know, know Willie, there's a perfect know. example of that because a couple of weeks ago, Derek, we had a big chat, Bobby was having a big chat on VAR, and you said, I'm sick of people talking about VAR. And I accept that, Derek. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you then covered that game, Motherwell against Ross County, and you did nothing but speak about VAR because of what was happening in the park. Yeah. It's totally dominating these games, and the fans are talking about it. And the point Alan's made regularly on this programme is for the fans on the ground it's not a good experience yeah, and it's dominating this programme yeah it does yeah. instead of talking about the goals <laughs> and stuff we're analysing whether what's going to be given what's the referee going to be called over to look at it's happening in just about every game every week it must happen in every country that's got it every week yeah it can't just be here no I think it is I think it does happen everywhere uh, and I think the, most, the majority of this group talking here suggests that yep it has a place, not in its current form, but let's really focus on the big issues, the black and white offsides, and then these shocking decisions like the Pauk Aberdeen penalty was awarded against Aberdeen on Thursday. Brendan Rodgers said it's turning into a computer game. And yes, okay. absolutely. Derek, Derek, go to ask Lewis if it was a Kenny McIntyre on Italian radio and drags it up every week. <laughs> I think it would be even funnier if it was a Chick Young. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder like. oh. I wonder what he would look like. I wonder what he would look like. Oh, the suave <laughs> Italian, idea. you can hear it, can you? Put Ronnie Gear on. Uh, be brilliant. Gucci up. We'd look Maybe forward to his book as well, wouldn't we? Can you ever do a book, Chick? Can you ever do a book? Uh, say that again, Kenny, I'm saying, I, I said we'd look forward to his book as well. Do you think you'll ever write a book about no, your, you know your life done, story? You know what I've done, Kenny? I've gone round a lot of people I know and said, oh, g give me ten grand, I'll keep you out of my book. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Josh Brownhill has equalised for Burnley away at Arsenal. Arsenal gone ahead in first half stoppage time. Kevin O'Hara has got There's his second chance. goal of the game and Hamilton Nackie's three still in Albion nil. Yes, Derek? It has a big chance for Hearts. It's just a, a free, again, a free kick into the box. It's not a down. Muller will not deal with balls into the box. And again, fall to, to Shanklin, but they get they get a block in just across that six yard box. But you just sense the second one's coming for Hearts. You know, uh, Motherwell started pretty well in the second half, and actually Hearts have made a change. Forrest has went off, Civic's come on, but uh, you just get the feeling in the ground at the moment that they're just waiting Hearts getting that second goal. Lindelof has put Man United 1-0 at home to Luton Town. Arsenal back in front against Burnley. Saliba on 57 minutes. Elgin City 2-0 up now at home to Bonnie Red Rose. Connell Ewan on 61 minutes. So, giving you the latest scores across Scotland this afternoon. Dundee 3, St Mirren 0, Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 0, Hearts 1, St Johnson 0, oh. oh. Ross County 0. Yes, that's a punch. Oh, this is like the something boy up in the middle of the park here. It's a bad, bad tackle by Ewan Murray of Wraith Rovers on, I think it was really Peyton in there. It looked like a, a really bad tackle. Peyton got up, I'm sure he punched him. He certainly pushed him. Uh, in the chest area, we'll see what happens. The referee's called them across. There could be certainly some colour of cards get flashed here. Real explosion in the middle of the park. That looks like a yellow card. I think they're both. Oh, here we go. Here's the re the, the, the card for Murray. The referee. So let's see what colour that's going to be. It's certainly an explosion. It's taking them right across the far side away from the group of players. I think it's going to be a talking to and a yellow card. Oh, I think we've had the red one by now. That looks a penalty. That's a claim. They have a look at that. Shanklin looks as if he was took from behind. Right, just had a first have look, a look at Kenny, this is interesting because there's no there's no VAR in the championship, but the referee has come across to the linesman on the main stand side here at Hamden to get advice from him. The old fashioned way. <laughs> yep. The good the old fashioned way. Yeah. way. <laughs> and it's a red card. I thought it was a bad challenge. I thought it was. And it's a red card. Off he goes. And there's a real now there's a coming together of players in there. I think it's actually going to be Murray. Yeah, Murray's the man getting red carded for the initial challenge. It was a bad one, and it was a reaction as well. The reaction brought the yellow card, and it's Wraith Rovers down to ten men. Right, still this check goes on, Bobby. Yeah. Have you had a chance of a look? Have we seen one image there? I mean, it's how the ball's come in. We're seeing a replay here towards Shanklin at the back yeah, post. It's a better angle, isn't it? He gets a shot away. Does he Again, get the ball? I, for me, he plays the ball. I, I don't think there be any involvement here, but I think the delay might be... Is there a potential offside as the ball's come over? Because Shanklin looks here with the ball in. 
There's no touch there. What I can tell you, any time the ball's put into the box, Mullow ain't dealing with it. You look all over the place, really disorganised. It's unusual for Stewart's team as well, but uh, if it's free kicks yeah, from open play, uh, they look so nervous when the ball's in that box, not dealing with it. I think the play still has it restarted, sorry, so this is the problem I think people have. Yeah. You look at it once, it's, it's not clear, so just move on. You, know, you might you be able do. to analyse it from angle after angle after angle to try and find something. Do you know what, Bobby, I think that's a very good point there. You know, looking at that incident there, you start looking and you're going, hmm, is there something? And ab I think you're 100% spot on. You look at it from different angles and you're trying to find something instead mm -hmm. of just look at it once, mm, I'm not sure, just play them. Yeah, so it's definitely not it's offside not, it's not from the ball over. It's not clear and obvious that, the, you know, there's a mistake in terms of not giving anything. So just get on with the game. And the fans are booing as and well at the moment, Kenny. Yeah. You've got players looking at each other. That's it. Check over. No penalty. That was a long time, Bobby, yeah. as you say, to get to that point. But that's the pressure that the VAR is under. He doesn't want to miss something. Then obviously we've got an observer there that'll say, oh, you missed this angle where it identified this contact. We shouldn't be looking at that detail. Alloa won Queen of the South nil. Alistair Roy on 64 minutes. Confirmation of that red card at Hamden Park. Ewan Murray sent off for Wraith Rovers on 61 minutes that, in that, that game. That was interesting, Kenny, yeah. that, you know, in the middle of all that bar, that the referee stopped the play uh, and, and came across to the linesman. He's an half chance for Queen's now. He came across uh, to the linesman. It's Paul O'Neill uh, st in the stand side. And uh, the, uh, Would he have indicated, Bob, that they had seen the ed ev ed evidence? Or, I think, or so think? they've obviously got open communication on, so he's probably saying, look, you've given a yellow card, I've got a clear picture in my yeah. own head that there was an act of violence I think or if it was for the tackle leaves it with serious foul player violent conduct which is great and I think as a referee you welcome that input from the assistants but VAR actually restricts that because he'll okay, leave it to VAR to come in so it's great to hear Paul O'Neill an experienced assistant referee come in to support the, the main referee Stennis Muir have equalised at home to Spartans Matthew Aitken on 61 minutes with the goal there we'll come back Craig, just, Craig Napier's a referee incidentally Craig Napier I'll come back just the, the one question I'm waiting to ask you Bobby from last weekend because Willie, Willie covered the game for us I think Willie thought there was a decent shot of a penalty at Hamden Park we'll get that in a minute Jamie Murphy has pulled a goal back for Air United away at Inverness Cali Thistle so 3-1 there it was a there. penalty all day every day well, of the I, week I agree with not my opinion matters a job but I, I was watching in the studio I watched someone sent me a clip and saying you're absolutely wrong so that was a penalty for me it was a stone wall penalty absolute penalty yeah. I showed, and I showed you the clip uh, during the week there of it and oh. Dylan Vent is, is his knee buckles under the challenge from Kelly Roos. It was a, it was an absolute stonewaller of a penalty for Hibs. It's, it's funny, I, I was on a flight and I landed to about 20 different messages and, and the same video sent to me from that low behind camera. Yes. And I could not believe on it, could not believe how it wasn't awarded as a penalty kick. Then there's another camera angle from the main camera. Maybe it not as clear, like a lot. But it's still not the attacker's responsibility to avoid contact from the, the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper doesn't play the ball, makes contact. For me, that was a penalty kick. So, and the disappointing thing is he wasn't called over. It, though. Aye, that's the thing, Willie. They had a quick didn't check. It. Yeah. So no one Var, called, he wasn't called over. And maybe VAR looked at the main camera and another maybe the tight camera and didn't even look at the, the low behind. I don't know. So you're referee no, on the I'm, park. You, you're ex I think it's probably as Willie's getting at here. You're expecting to be called over to at least have a yeah. look, have a proper look. And, but yeah. see if we go down that where there's any contentious decision we're going to look at it, it'll slow down even more. Yeah. So we really need to keep it. Let's only get involved when it's absolutely clear. From that low behind camera angle, I thought it was absolutely clear. Yeah. Maybe not so from the other. So where we go with have then maybe an on-field review at that instant that Derek's watching there at Fur Park. It would just it prolong the yeah. process even more and we don't want that. See, the thing is, and this is a, it's a good point in terms of, what, you know, on one hand we're saying about the incident at uh, Fur Park, like, speed it up, hurry up, have a look, you can't even really see anything, move on. And then we're talking about Hamden, there's one angle that shows you that it's clearly, and then there's another angle that's a bit, you know, unsure. I think, though, there's, you know, you didn't, it's not like you had to spool through um, seven different camera angles. We saw it pretty quickly yep. within, you know, within a, about 20 or 30 seconds. I saw that angle and I was like, that's a penalty kick. And it wasn't a difficult one. It was not one that you're like, mm, I'm not sure. This was pretty much stonewall when you saw it from that one angle. So I think you should be able to get that and get it done quickly enough to get to the right decision without wasting too much time. Yeah, I think from that angle, I was, at first, my first view, penalty kick. 
But again, do you give the referee the opportunity to look at it? You've got Aye. one clear angle, but then the others are maybe not so clear. How but, long do you move around the angles? But that, um, that, that, that's crucial. That's a semi-final as well. Absolutely. I know all games are crucial. Um, and for VAR not to pick that up and ask the referee to have a look at it, then, uh, you, you know, I was dumbfounded as well. And, you know, I'm sitting up there, I've watched it, and I'm saying, even, even without the replay, I thought that Kelrus, because Kelrus pulled... He's pulled the ball and then yep. he's struggling uh, for it. it and he's stretching for it as well. So I think it had to be checked, but it, it wasn't. I think VAR you know, made an error not asking the referee to have a look at it. And again, without the transparent communication, sharing the audio as they do in rugby that Chick desperately wants, and I would totally agree with, you don't know what the communication is. As a very experienced referee, it would have been an experienced VAR saying, I have seen that, he's going to... You know, so that's where it'd be great to hear that. Be, I'd love to yeah. hear the conversation. That, that won't happen, though, will it? Um, no, no, I think won't. too quickly. Um, no, I think we might hear it retrospectively, but I don't think we'll hear it live for a long time. Right, Blair Henderson put Spartans 2 1 up away at Stennis Muir on 61 minutes. Stennis Muir have equalised on 64 minutes. Clyde have gone 1 0 up away at 4 for Connor Young on 71. Falkett now ahead against Edinburgh City. Ross McIver on 66 minutes, 2 1 there. That's you up to date with the latest goal news. Let's then get back round the grounds. What an incredible performance, Willie Miller, from the home side at Dens Park. Oh, it's magnificent. Uh, the, the fans are loving it here. And, uh, you, you know, the pattern hasn't really changed. Uh, St Murn have had plenty of the ball. Uh, they, they, they take the game to uh, Dundee. They do literally nothing with it. And then Dundee hit the space that they've left and have taken advantage of it in a number of occasions. OK, the first two goals came from set pieces. But the, the, the actual set pieces came Shanklin, from breakaways. Shanklin, Shanklin, it's a goal! He gets his second. Little bit of class as well. Didn't panic when he got in there, just took it to the side, right hand side, and then just slots it past the keeper. It was, you could feel it coming, Kenny, you know, motherwell, you know, all over the place at the back, and he's straight through the middle this time. And I tell you, it's a, it's a great finish because once he gets there, he's 1v1 and just takes the right hand side. There is players coming back, but uh, just that little touch of class that I think Shanklin's got and just passes into the, into the open net. Willie! Hello! Duke or Shanklin? <laughs> Duke, did you not watch that goal? That was a great goal, I'll give him hey. that. It was a great goal. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Could have had a hat trick here today uh, as well. He was so cool in the finish, uh, wasn't he, Derek? He, yeah, but he had a chance as well that was blocked at the start of the second half, at uh, three, four minutes in. Uh, then the overhead kick, well, it wasn't an overhead kick, just stretching, but trying to hook the ball over his head. So, uh, but tell you what, he's still got plenty of time to get that hat trick. But uh, he's just a real threat up front. You, you, it's clear to see. Derek, yeah, let me ask you this: for we go around the rest of the guys, I, I mentioned this off the ball earlier on. I watched an interview that Sky did with uh, Stuart Kettwell after the midweek defeat. Oh, what a goal! What a <laughs> goal! That is by St Johnston. Wonderful football right up the park. It's played into Stevie May. He's got his back to goal. He rolls it goal. to the edge of the box and Graham Carey with his left foot passes it into the top corner. Brilliant goal from St Johnson. As we sit, they're off the bottom of the league. St Johnson won Ross County now. Another goal. It's a goal for Queen's Park. A big wise against Ray Throwers. Damaging Ray Throwers' uh, chances of catching uh, Dundee United the top. Remember, they're down to 10 men. I think it's uh, Jack Turner who got the final touch into the net, it was rattled in for the right-hand side, someone got a touch on it, the goalkeeper provided a save, fell for Turner, he's knocked into the net, and it's a one each, it is Jack Turner who scored, it is Queen's Park one, Wraith Rovers one. That's a big goal, have you a chance to look at that one, Bobby, at McDermott Park? It's, a, it's great hold-up play, then laid off to carry it just outside the edge of the box, I think we all, we've seen many times that great strike with the left foot, and as, as well described, and bent into that top uh, left-hand corner, as you look at the goal, fantastic strike. It's a great goal. See, when you see it, if you, if you take it all the way back, it starts with Smith in the right back area. Lovely piece of play by him. Plays it into, into Carey, who quickly whips it out to Robinson, who goes down the byline, cuts it back into Stevie May, who's got his back to goal, who rolls it back to Carey, who continued his run. Oh. and whips into the top corner. It's a wonderful team goal. And also, Alan, it's, it, 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 it's something, uh, something positive and lovely in the life of Graham Carey right now. We know yeah, he's got yeah, a real really struggle sad. that's why he's got a cancer and battle on and there was a terrific show of support from the St Johnson fans midweek. And every fan, it's, 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 it's tragic, it really is really sad and you know, hopefully that uh, 
She gets all the care that she needs. It's, it's just a terrible situation, and all credit to him, he's been brilliant. Yeah, and we send her all the best from everyone in the sports sound team. Good luck uh, with that battle. Jack Turner with a goal then for Queen's Park on 70 minutes, one apiece there. Graham Carey putting St Johnston ahead on 71 minutes. Peter Head have equalised at home to Stranraer. Caleb Goldie with a the goal there in 68 minutes. An own goal. Uh, that Shanklin goal coming through in 71 minutes. 2 0 up away at Motherwell. Got a question for you in a minute. Oh, Derek Zach Rudden. Rudden. Yep. Zach Rudden's away again. He's got support as well. He's looking up. Oh, it's just a dreadful, dreadful cross into the box. But, uh, you know, he did really well for the third goal, Zach Rudden. But that occasion, he let himself down. And, um, you know, St Mirren hitting the, the crossbar. Uh, old Yusanya, who it was, that uh, good cross in from the right hand side. He's sliding in at the back post. And he gets his toe on it. But uh, unfortunately for him, it uh, flips up and it comes off the crossbar. So, you know, St Mirren trying everything. Five substitutions have made. <laughs> um, yep. You know, so that, that tells its own story. Um, <laughs> Haven't really been in it in the last 10 minutes. It's been about Dundee just containing them, but uh, that was a big opportunity. And then Rudden again on the break uh, w with an opportunity to uh, get the fourth, but uh, the cross into the box looking for Lyle Cameron was poor. Okay, Kay, this is 1-0 yep. uh, no, still to Hibs at Easter Road, but Kilmarnock are building pressure, and you're just thinking it's going to happen again. That, uh, Hibs are going to blow a lead. It's... 15 minutes roughly to go, but the away side are the ones that are pushing here and just oh. looks like there's a real bit of nervousness in this Hibs side. Yeah, the Hibs, out the game the Hibs fans will be feeling that, Michael, won't they? Because yeah, they've lost goals and winning positions and the manager spoke about that midweek at uh, St Mirren Park. Oh, a corner came in there. Armstrong crossed the face and I think it was Joe Wright just coming in at the near post, flicked it on and then it slid right across the edge of the six-yard line. Nobody able to get on the end of it, but... Hibs are, the, you can sense that the crowd are getting apprehensive and nervous. The players are losing the ball in turnovers. They need to just calm themselves down and uh, and show a bit of composure. And if they can, try and get a second goal because at the moment it looks like Kilmarnock at their wayside are the ones that are pushing. Montrose have equalised at home to Ann and Kerr Waddle on 71 minutes. Hamilton Aki's now 4 0 up at home to Stirling oh, Albion. Ewan Heathers on 69. Yes. Yeah, it's a hand, but Motherwell. Motherwell penalty kick. Yeah, it was a. Who's that hand? But it was certainly a handball. You could see it. You know, the arms outstretched as the shot goes in. Certain penalty kick. No mistake. So, I mean, Motherwell come back from being two goals behind before. Goal! Uh, not so long ago. And Queen's Park have taken the lead. And they've turned this round since Wraith Rovers went down to ten men. There's space all down the right-hand side. The ball was whipped in. I think it's Rudy Payton inside the box. Almost a simple tap-in. Wraith Rovers torn apart at the back. This game has turned around. It's Queen's Park 2, Wraith Rovers 1. That's a massive blow for the title aspirations of Wraith Rovers. Partick Thistle also down to ten men, just like Rovers are this afternoon. Brian Graham sent off. In the 74th minute, he was showing a second yellow card in that game. Derek? Yeah, so for me, I've got a clear view of it. You know, it's uh, certainly, I think it's Cochran. The, the, yep, the hands are Yeah, it hits his hand. Clear to see the ball is going goal bound as Derek, well. What's he meant to do, though? And, and, and this is the problem you have criteria as the hand but, in a natural position. But in this position, day and age, uh, Michael, yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's it. always going to be oh, no, uh, as soon as it's, it's, the um, arm is outstretched and it's stopping. You, from this angle, it looked as if it was going in there. Spittle, beautiful penalty, right into the top left hand corner. I think it was always going to be given, Michael. It's, I'm not, I'm not denying yeah. it's going to be given, but in terms of when you're talking about a natural position, you know, even within the wording of the law, I don't think that penalty needs to be given because his arm is in a position as a consequence of the movement he's stretching to try to block the ball the ball's leather them from about a yard away and it hits his arm but yeah. see in these instances I do have some sort of sympathy with most of the time my sympathy is with defenders because they're being punished for nothing but with the attackers when there's a shot or a strike that's on target and it's blocked by an arm which is completely you know Michael, accidental do you want then to know, what do you need to do I think there needs to be a halfway house do you want to not know, a penalty I think it's unnatural when you see players putting their hands behind their back yes yeah. that's 100%. not natural that's no natural and it's crazy in this day and age but that's the rules now isn't it so it's uh, right. and you could just tell it's always going to be given but uh, as I say yeah because the game's about when you're stretching it's your balance you, you use your arms jumping but I tell you what, what I thought this game was done and dusted but uh, can Mother will come back again 
as, <laughs> as your rule, though, as your rule, though, that um, your, your arm has got to be in an unnatural position, or is, is the, the, the rule something to do with, uh, you know, outside your body line? Right, Bobby. Or is it a combination of both? And that's it, you know, there's criteria there, and you talk about a natural for the movement or the action which you're completing, then you've got below the T-shirt line, you've got the silhouette, all of this nonsense, that, which <laughs> essentially overcomplicates it, but what yeah. they need to do is to create criteria that allows match officials to assess handballs, and you're not going to agree with them, you're absolutely not, we all won't agree on them, but they need criteria so they tr can try and consistently apply that criteria, and, and nowadays, as Derek said, you fully expect a penalty kick, now, you might not agree with it, but you fully expect it, and that's what you move towards. They butchered the handball law years ago, well not years ago, probably about five or six years ago, when they got rid of the you know deliberate handball, and now, and I've said this on a number of occasions, the actual wording of it is back to almost being like that, but it's so wordy that most people just don't understand or, or overly complicate it. Because if your arm is in that position because of the action that you're undertaking, that means it's unintentional, it's a subconscious thing, it's not deliberate. And if your arm is outstretched and it's not part of the action, then that is deliberate and you will be punished. So effectively, it is back to, is it deliberate or not? And you have a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance to look at it with replays. Just simplify it. Is it deliberate or not? And you can look at the replays to determine that. That certainly seems a sensible option. As a likely, I'm sure we'll get to that point. Zinchenko has put Arsenal 3-1 up at home to Burnley, despite being down to 10 men parked at Thistle ahead, and home to Morton Blair Alston on 77 minutes. Crystal Palace have equalised at home to Everton. Odson Edward with the goal in 73. Across the face. Oh, David Marshall, a big save at the near post. Big save. Marley Watkins was down the right-hand side, fizzed the ball across, and David Marshall, as I said, at the near post, he was diving out at the feet of uh, one of the other Kilmarnock players, I'm not sure who it was that was coming in, and he got a hand on it to clear the clear the ball out of danger, but uh, yes the pressure is mounting here at Easter Road Right, let's get you an update on the latest scores across the country Dundee 3, St Mirren 0 Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 1, Hearts 2, St Johnston 1 Ross County 0 In the Championship, Airdrie 1 are both 0, Inverness Callies 3 Air United 1, Part of Thistle 2, Morton 1, Queen's Park 2, 10 man Wraith Rovers 1, into League 1, Alloa 1, Queen of the South 0, Falkirk 2, Edinburgh City 1, Hamilton Ackies 5, Stirling Albion 0, Kelty Hearts 0, Cove Rangers 1, Montrose 1, and an Athletic 1, in League 2, East Fife 0, Dumbarton 1, Elgin City 2, Bonnie Regros 0, Forfar 0, Clyde 1, Peterhead 2, Stranraer 2, Stennis Muir 3, Spartans 2 in England it finished at lunchtime Rules 2 Tottenham Hotspur 1 Arsenal 3 Burnley 1 Crystal Palace 2 Everton 2 Man United 1 Luton 0 and Bournemouth 0 Newcastle United 0 let's get back into the championship we haven't heard from Amy Canavan for a while Airdrie against our bro what's happening in that game Amy? Kenny, you came to me at absolutely perfect time. There has just been a goal for Adrian Inns. We are just trying to figure out exactly who it is because of the delightfully placed pillar that is positioned right <laughs> in front of me here at the Excelsior Stadium. I now feel Chick Young's pain when he's here every Saturday and he can't see what's going on. It's ridiculously positioned. And to be honest, the Airdrie strip, which we, is a beautiful strip, but when you look at the diamond on the back, it's very tricky to see. Our both have been trying to push for that equaliser and they were just caught out at the back. Some, somebody has burst away. I think it's substitute Lewis McGregor because it's on that far side so let's go with that in the position and sense and he's broke away and he's slotted home lovely underneath Derek, G Derek Gaston sorry. Airdrionians very much looking like they will be in the promotion playoff spot. Yeah there's a few grounds you're shaking through you bang on Lewis McGregor on 79 minutes with a the goal there so Airdrie 2 are both nil dense part certainly suffers from that as well it's quite hard to see certain angles of the pitch there but the Dundee fans Willie Miller will be loving what they're seeing this afternoon yeah, and trying to pick out the numbers in the St. Uh, Murren uh, top as That's well. That's not easy. That no, <laughs> I saw that midweek. It's not oh, easy. It's a nightmare. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's going. Everything's going. And they're playing some lovely football, uh, Dundee, now. You, you can see it's a team with energy and confidence, and they're slicking the ball about and, and making nice little patterns and advancing forward. So, you, you know, I think that uh, they thoroughly deserve to be in the lead. It's been a real struggle. They force it, man. So open at the back, yeah. They, they, they put more energy into it in the second half, um, but it's that kind of a rushed energy, you know, when you know that 
this this game looks as though it's beyond you and you've just got to do something to try and turn it round. There's not a great deal of uh, thought going into it, I don't think. Uh, you know, Stephen Robinson's rung the changes, made five uh, changes, but Dundee, Dundee have defended extremely well. And when they get a chance to go forward, they're potent, they're a real threat going forward. Uh, you know, the majority of times that's where their goals have came from. Um, and they thoroughly deserve to be in the league. Yeah, it baffled me midweek, I have to say, in their draw at home to, uh, to Hibs when the St Mirren manager, Stephen Robinson, said post-match, a terrific performance, one of their best of the season. I have to say his antics and touchline didn't reflect that. I thought they were pretty poor there and certainly a poor performance from them at Dens Park this afternoon. Let's then get to Easter Road. The, the wayside still fighting there, Michael. Yeah, they are. Obviously, as long as the game remains 1-0 and with the, the recent history of Hibs, then it will give Kilmarnock belief and, and uh, confidence that they can get something from the game. And until Hibs are able to see out these games, then there's going to be an element of nervousness for the, the home side. And, uh, you know, so it is proven. I think there's about seven minutes plus injury time that uh, remain. Um, and, yes, the game is well and truly still in the balance. The home side narrowly in front, 1-0, and the away side are pushing desperately to try to get something from the game. Derek Motherwell fighting back there, but if they don't get anything from the game this afternoon, I mentioned this in Off the Ball at lunchtime, I saw an interview last week, Stuart Kettler wasn't happy with a question that was asked of him about his position, given the run of form they're on. I feel it was a bit early for that question, but do you think the pressure will be applied to him if they don't do something this afternoon? I think it... I think it may well, and it, it, there's a different feel, Kenny. I know they've got the goal back, but there's a different feel to, the, uh, to this Motherwell side. You, you know, you, I don't know, you look at body language, I, I've noticed uh, this afternoon quite a few of them, you know, getting after each other, a few little kind of arguments, bickering between the players, which I didn't see early on in the season. And you just see, you know, there seems to be a bit of... Not nervousness, nervousness, but there's, there's just, just something not right, you know. And uh, obviously with Stuart reacting like, which is really unusual. Yeah. But uh, but maybe yeah, that's a telltale sign that, that, that he I, is feeling I'm, a little yeah. bit of the pressure. Kenny, I'm worried about you. Are you going soft? <laughs> <laughs> feeling for managers now. I know it's ridiculous. I've changed. I don't know oh, what's happened. It's happened. another opportunity. <laughs> oh yes, it's the fourth goal. Oh my goodness. It's the fourth goal dear, for dear. Uh, Thierry Small this time. Once again. On the break, St Mirren wide open. Good play from um, little Lyle Cameron as well. And Terry Small just clips it over the goalkeeper into the back of the net. Oh, what a goal this will be! Here. And oh, you can hear. Save. Brilliant play but again by St Johnston. May to Carey and to Phillips. Back to May. Good save in the end. St Johnston, good value now for the 1 0 lead. Should be more. Played well in the second half. They're still one up with five minutes to go. What's been the difference in the second half to the St Johnson performance, Al? They've played with intent, really hard. Carey's got on the ball. They've got strikers now, which I feel sorry for Stephen McLean. He never had any strikers early on. Nicky Clark's back. Stevie May's back. Chrissy Kane's back. They've got strikers that hold the ball up for them. And that's been the difference in the second half. They've managed to... Clark's going off injured, unfortunately. Hopefully he's OK. May's came on. Um, Kane's now went off as well. They're trying to see the game through, but... Yeah, they've got a real intent in the wider areas. Robinson gets forward, Carey's brilliant delivery on his left foot. Uh, just a totally different side in the second half, St Johnson. Does have to be one up? That will be a big uh, result for St Johnson. Zach Robinson with that goal yep. for Dundee on 85 minutes. Well, yeah, no bother at all. 4-0 for the home side there at Dens Park. Four for a week wise oh, late on the home to Clyde. Stuart Morrison, 89. Michael? Oh, it's not come to anything, but... Jimmy Jago was back in the, the, the back line for Hibs and he tried to fire a ball down the line. It got cut out, it got played right to Marley Watkins and I thought there was a chance for him to go and break, but he took a touch, held it up, it was a bit slow and all of a sudden any impetus was lost. But just before that, Hibs had a good bit of attacking playing uh, down the left-hand side with Eli Yuhan. He was jinking one way and the next. The ball ended up with, uh, with Josh Campbell around about the edge of the box. He cut in with a good strike. Dennis, the goalkeeper got strong hands on it and were, uh, was able to keep it out but uh, yes it's uh, Hibs still have that danger because they've got a lot of attacking intent and pressure uh, and presence in the in the forward line they can get something but the classic Hibs syndrome of they just don't look fully in control when they've got this lead How's Tavares? We had a good chat with him midweek Michael some real moments of excellence from him at St Mirren Park on Wednesday night How's he look today? The same 
you know, he's got he's got ability, he's got some quality, but um, you know, inevitably when you've got a, a lot of that type of player in your side, then it's going to be deficient in uh, other aspects in regards to a little bit of uh, hard work and graft and, and defensive instinct as Hibs break up the park. Martin Boyle through. Tell you what, Stuart Finlay's defended that brilliantly. Got across, out muscled him, and he slipped the ball down the line for Murray as he jumps, pa he jumps past one tackle. Josh Campbell, he's down the left hand side. Lewis Miller, terrible attempt. He's into the box. Not a good cross, but the pressure is still on. Kilmarnock down the left again. Murray with a chance to throw it into the box. Oh, the hips clear it. Arsenal down to 10 men, Vieira, Fabio Vieira sent off on 83 minutes there ahead though against Burnley, gave that equaliser for for Stuart Morrison on 89 minutes, equalising at home to Clyde. Let's then get to Alan Preston, Ross County, worrying signs for them, Alan been in a fairly poor run, probably should have taken more from the games prior to today. Now the three draws out of four, obviously they came unstuck against Celtic last week. Um, that's St Johnson in the second half. They've not created anything, Ross County. Absolutely nothing really created. And that'll be a worry for Malky Mackay. They're loading the box now. They're, they are pushing on a lot of pressure. St Johnson got everyone back. It's a free kick. We've just got over a minute to go here. Can it be a fair bit of added on time, I would imagine, for a few injuries here. And they're just going to hit from back to front and try and get something. But it's maybe a worrying uh, sign for Ross County. St Johnston, on the other hand, you know, that'll be seven points with a possible nine in the last three games. Upward trajectory for them, you can see. Um, but it's not over yet. There's still, I think, there'll be five or six minutes added on here. You look at the bottom of that table, the live table right now. St Johnson played 12, 11 points. Ross County played 12, 10 points. Livingston played 12, 10 points. They're at home to Rangers tomorrow. Murrow getting sucked right in. They played a game more. They're on 12 points. Aberdeen, they have played the fewest games. They've played 10 games with 12 points. They've got a tough one tomorrow away at Celtic Park. Hibbs just outside the top six, hanging on against Kilmarnock there. Kilmarnock still just above them in the table. But as Michael telling us, really giving it a go to get the equaliser in that game. Just in terms of St Mirren, Willie, just, just, what are you saying to me? We know there's been a bug going through the squad. Do they look just a bit lacklustre, a bit off it today? No, I don't think so. They, they, they don't look as though they're lethargic, uh, uh, Kenny. You know, it's just been a poor performance um, oh, from them. They've, they've had enough of the ball, um, but, you know, they've left themselves totally open oh, in a number of occasions. It's an equaliser! It looks like an own goal. It was built up down the left side, played in. There was a slight shot. I'm sure that came off. A Queen's Park defender, Wraith Rollers. Players are going mad, going towards their fans. We played 99 minutes, Oof. and it's now Queen's Park 2, Wraith Rovers 2. Wow, that could be a huge goal for the way said there. A big goal for Evan away at Crystal Palace. It's just a game which looks like the winner there late, late on. 86 minutes there, 3 2 up Everton away at Crystal Palace in that game. So a massive goal for Wraith Rovers. They surely will have ambitions of catching Dundee United, albeit United have the biggest squad, the biggest budget, and they do look very strong. A good win for them last night at East End Park away at Dunfermline Athletic. 2-1, a late winner there for Jim Goodwin's side. Let's get back to Michael at Easter Road. Still piling on the pressure. Come on, Michael. Yeah, it's, uh, it's safe at the moment. Hibs have got a free kick, but just before that, there was a ball into the box. Uh, Mackenzie at the near post, he got a touch, and I don't know whether it was uh, David Marshall or whether it was the post that uh, it came off, but um, the referee decided it must have been David Marshall that made the save. The ball went behind for a corner kick. For a split second, it looked as if it was going to sneak in at that near post, but um, yes, very, very nervous uh, for the home side at the moment. He's been getting a bit of stick, David Marshall, I see from some of the hip fans, Michael. Um, yeah, I think there's obviously, inevitably, when somebody gets to that stage in their career, there's a, a few uncharacteristic mistakes that have been made, but over the piece, look, David Marshall's still a wonderful goalkeeper, and uh, I don't think when you look at the, the alternatives at, at Hibs, there is anybody better. Kenny, that, that goal... Oh, it's a penalty! Oh, my goodness me! Wraith Rovers have a penalty oh. kick. This is dramatic stuff. It's Jamie Gullen who's been brought down inside the box. That goal, incidentally, has been credited to Hamilton, uh, the, the equaliser. Yep. And, and now we have a penalty kick. 
Oh, this is some stuff. It's remember, it was Wraith Rovers ahead. Queens oh. went 2-1 ahead, two each. And now we've got a chance with 90 minutes of the clock for Wraith Rovers to grab all three points and stay in hot pursuit of Dundee United at the top of the table. The referee just trying to organise things inside the box. We'll just find out who's just going to take this kick in a moment or two. I think it... Yeah, it's going to, it's going to be uh, Ross Millman who's going to take it. Experienced player, just sorting the penalty spot out there, just getting it calmed down. Steps up, he's going to take it right-footed. What a dramatic moment for Rovers. This will be placed by the back line, digs into the back of the net, it's absolutely magnificent. He takes off the strip, and the GPS vest, slides in the corner flag. Oh, my goodness me. Wraith Rovers have gone 3-2 ahead. Absolutely incredible game there at the National Stadium. What a fight back for Rovers. You better believe they're right in this title race. They're fighting right to the death. They're Elgin City beating Bonu Groves 2-0. Oh. <laughs> like, every time I look up, I see a command yeah. attack. Oh, every here's time another. I look up. They've still not cleared it. Ball's clipped back in. Oh, it's flicked away for another corner. Kilmarnock are really pressing. There was a corner in from Matty Kennedy. It flicked on, I think it was Brad Lyons at the near post. And then managed to clear it, but they're not getting it up the park. Kilmarnock are winning all the second balls and they're just keeping the pressure on, but there's a head player down on the penalty spot. They've obviously been caught in some sort of collision. I don't know if it was a head knock. There's a few complaints from Hibs players suggesting the game should have been stopped, but it's Martin Boyle. He's got back up, seems to be OK. And now the corner kick from the other side is his time is, uh, is ticking. Joe McKee looks to have scored a late winner for Peter Head. 89 minutes, they lead Stranraer by three goals to two. I gave you the full time, Elgin City two, Bonnie Rig Rose nil. Ross Millen with that penalty for Wraith Rovers in the 92nd minute. That after Jack Hamilton in 89 minutes had drawn Ian Murray's side level there. Real drama. Alwa have beaten Queen of the South by one goal to nil. Kelty Arts nil, Cove Rangers one, also a full time score. Four for one, Clyde one. Four nil here at Dens. That's how it's finished to Dundee. Fantastic. Thank that. you, man. Nah, that's all that is. That's it's all over, Kenny. Model one, Hearts two. Thanks, Derek. So Dundee up to fifth in the table, level on points with Hearts there in fourth after that win away at Fair Park this afternoon. Mother right in the mix at the bottom of the table now. They've played more games, one more game, than the three teams below them. And they only have a point advantage over St Johnson, two points over Ross County and Livingston if things stay the same. Alan Preston. St Johnson are oh, they're defending deeper and deeper, but County haven't really done anything. There's a full town whistle. St Johnson off the bottom, up to 10th leapfrog. Livingston and Ross County, brilliant results. St Johnson won, Ross County nil. Wow, some real late drama on Sports Sound this afternoon. That is a huge game, a huge win for Craig Levine's side. They probably should actually have had two wins from two under the new manager. Actually, have been three wins from three since Stephen McLean left with a peg back by Motherwell midweek. Montrose have drawn one apiece with Anna and Athletic. Just confirmation that Motherwell scoreline coming through. Motherwell won hearts to a double from Lauren Shanklin. 27 and 71 minutes. Blair Spittle gave the home side hope from the penalty spot in 78 minutes, but they couldn't find an equaliser there. Confirmation now going through. St Johnson won, Ross County nil, Montrose won, and an Athletic won. Patrick Thistle have beaten Morton by two goals to one. Blair Alston with the winner there on 77 minutes. That after Thistle had been reduced to 10 men, a second yellow card for Brian Graham on 74 minutes. So we're still playing full time here at Easter Road, the home side. See the game out to take the three points, 1-0. Yeah, interesting to hear the thoughts of the Hibs manager. He was speaking, Nick Montgomery, during the week, very, very frustrated at the late goals of lost games he felt they should have won, including that semi-final through at Hamden Park last Saturday evening. But Aberdeen got the job done. A great finish from Bojan Miofsky there. Hamilton Ackies have thumped Stirling Albion by five goals to nil in League One. Still playing Amy Canavan in your game. Still going, Kenny. Adrian is just making another sub just to try 
and see the game out, I think. But to be honest, there's eight hard points are not really testing Josh Ray's goal. I don't really know why the substitution needs to be made. They're clearly just trying to keep us all excited here, but it is still Adrianians 2 0 against our both. Yeah, we love the championship, that's for sure. Our both in just a wee bit of oh. bother, you would have to say. They are second bottom of the table and 12 points alongside Inverness, Cali Thistle, waiting for that full-time score coming through for Cali Thistle, but they were cruising at home to Air United. Still playing at Hampton, Chuck? Oh, Ian Murray's screaming for the full-time whistle down there in front of me. But Queen's Park on the attack. They've got a corner. Or well into... Oh, no, the ball. Oh, oh. No, Hingeman says that's a goal kick. So I would think the race rollers would see this now. What an astonishing game. Absolutely brilliant. You know what you can do with your whiskey fair. I'd much rather watch the football. <laughs> it's been it's been utterly fantastic. We'll check in me later on this game. evening and see if that's the case. Uh, <laughs> Queen's Park. <laughs> I might need to be settler right now. <laughs> it's been a great listen. We love the championship. It always delivers. Actually, a very good game, you'd have to say, in the channel last night. I know Michael was there. A very good win for Jim Goodwin's side. Confirmation, another win for Inverness. Cali Thistle under Duncan Ferguson. 3-1 to beat Air United. Two goals from recent signing David Wotherspoon. He scored on his debut a couple of weeks ago. So still waiting on that game finishing there. And just looking round, the top flight grounds were all done there. So and it's that just is the championship. all over at the Excelsior, Kenny. 2-0 Airdrie. 2-0 to Airdrie, a very good win for them. There is their bros just struggling off late. Full-time score in League One. The leaders, Falkirk, coming from behind to beat Edinburgh City by two goals to one there. So, Chick Young, the stage is all yours. We're just waiting for you to finish. <laughs> Ian Murray's desperate for this to finish down there. He is going absolutely bananas in that technical area. It's uh, Queen's Park on the attack. They're trying to get a corner kick. They've got the ball. They've whipped it away to the far post. And Wraith Rovers getting this clear. We're well into time. Adi, there's Queen's for a penalty. There's chance inside the box. Overhead kick. Chance. Oh, it's cleared off the line. This is unbelievable <laughs> stuff. Ian Murray has gone through hell down there. The referee... It's played on, remember the scenario, it's 3-2 to the Rovers. They were down to 10 men. Louis Vaughan put the Rovers ahead in the first half, 1-0 at half-time. A red card for Ewan Murray seemed to have changed the game because uh, Jack Turner and then Rudy Payton put Queen's Park ahead. But what a dramatic climax. The 10 men rattled back. Hamilton made it to each. And then a penalty uh, after Gullen. Gullen had been brought down the box. Ross Millen scored it, and it's 3-2. And there it goes! The full-time whistle. So the manager just clenches his fist there and looks back at the bench and away to my left. The Rovers fans go absolutely bananas. What a performance. What a football match. The gap at the top has closed to four points and Queen's Park have lost to Wraith Rovers by three goals to two. Terrific stuff from Chick Young there. You've earned yourself a wee dram tonight, Chick. That was absolutely tremendous at the end there. As Chick said, four points behind Dundee United. They themselves had a late winner last night. But crucially, Wraith Rovers have a game in hand. So all the reaction to come on sports. And we'll hear from the managers as well. I'm sure they'll have plenty to say on this afternoon's events. We'll get fans from various clubs joining us from half past five. Three guests will join me in the studio for that. And our music this evening chosen by Motherwell legend now doing a great job for St Mirren that's their Chief Operating Officer Keith Lasley all that to come on Sports Sound right after the BBC Radio Scotland News at five o'clock on digital